Hello, everybody. <coughs> Adversaries, enemies, friends, countrymen. <laughs> it is Tuesday, November 28th, and this is the meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority at Golden Court in Hadley, Massachusetts. Welcome. Um, the agenda as stands. Um, first, any topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of this meeting? Any topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of a meeting that's not on the agenda? Yeah, I wanted to, I'm, I, maybe I'm mistaken, but I when I looked at the Belchertown truck of maybe a month ago, I noticed that it had Connecticut license plates. It does not have Connecticut Thank license you. plates. So it, it has it has Massachusetts government. But it says plate. Connecticut. It on the truck. It All right, well, look again. So I just Probably wanted to. It like maybe it was, but I just wondered, you know, yeah. what was happening. Okay. That. No. I get confused by long words all the time. I got them back. Any other topics? Now, you can always bring things up later if uh, the board is opposed. The approval of minutes. Uh, Reese, would you like to ask or make that motion, please, for the first okay. of minutes? Uh, well, let's find out if everybody's read them and has any. I move we approve the minutes from Tuesday, September 26th as written. Do I have a second? Second. Do I do one Two second. Yeah, Two second. All right. I'll second. Any other discussion on approval of the minutes of Tuesday, September 26th? You can always read it later and bring back issues if you have them. If not, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Approved. I move that we approve the minutes of Thursday, October 5th, 2023. Another second. Thank you, Richie. A seconded. Uh, discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstentions? All right. Done with that. Nope. Nope, sorry, we have another one. Say, say they're approved. Approved. Okay, I move that we approve the minutes from Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. Do I have a second? No second, second again. Richie? Okay, Richie, this is second. Discussion on approval of the minutes of Tuesday, October 24th. Not hearing any, all in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Against? Abstentions? Passed unanimously the minutes of October 24th. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Executive Director's Report. Okay, first is the financial, the warranty reports. <coughs> okay, I got them all in order. I'll help you out. And I'm going to bring up an issue here. Pamela, help me with this. Either Pamela, please. These um, war reports are titled transactions between, and then there's a single date. And this, mm -hmm. the first one I'm looking at here is for accounts payable transactions between 9-7-2023 and 9-7-2023. Would you like me to explain? No. Okay. My suggestion was going to be, for clarity's sake, that since the transactions happened over a period of time, not just on one day, this is the day the checks are being written, I understand that, but the transactions for which we are making those payments actually happen over a period of time, usually within the previous month, but I see not always. Mm -hmm. Would it be more clear and more correct to say for <coughs> transactions between, and to have the previous month listed here, if you rather than just say the date that you're writing the check. I've never seen this before. I so this, this is how the, the report comes from the, the software. Um, typically what we do in the other two housing authorities is it shows transactions for from September 1st to September 30th, 31st? Yeah, it'll, it'll show the entire month and we always approve that month. 
But in Hadley, we break it up because you folks are physically signing. The, we have two folks that are signing and reviewing the invoices prior. So that's why they're broken up, and it's on those days that the checks are the, the, the checks are being cut. So that's why we have, on, so on, <coughs> as you pointed out, on September 7th, uh, staff accountant did that, those ones, and then, um, I'm not sure what name of October, October 5th, mm -hmm. they did that, that one. And there were no other, you know, 921, 97, 921, and, uh, October 5th, October 26th. Okay. And the other thing is too, I can, I can just direct her to do them once a month because this is a lot of dates <coughs> to be, okay. typically we only do once a month in smaller housing. Employees. I don't, can I, can so I, I add some that? to that? Can sure. I clarify? We have been through this very same question before. I think Harry brought it up before and we all then had to get educated about it. It's because the board voted, quorum vote, to do it this way. And so this date, as Pamela said, points to when Rich and I sat there and wrote checks. The report is pulled that day. And so it's, even though these are the invoices, transactions are when these bills were paid and they were paid on that day. So all these bills were paid on 9, 7, 10, you know, 26, et cetera. But, that, but this is okay, a, a choice you. the board made. Thank you. Not my board, but thank you. Um, I'm going to repeat, though, in my opinion, it is uh, misleading and obfuscates the actual activity of the housing authority by making it look like these transactions when you really mean these payments are being made on one day. All these transactions of the warrant happen at various dates, at various times during the month. So Would you anyway, like if that's minute? clear to all of you and your bookkeeping and the auditor and all that stuff, then uh, no big deal. Um, but for me, I thought it was you know, Sir? much less clear than it had to be. Harry's got a point here. Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. Yes, Harry. Well, the, the point on this particular one, I've got questions on a number of these uh, that I've highlighted. But this one that we're talking about first on 9-7, we have an invoice that goes back to March 31st uh, to uh, Gary the Pace laser checks. So at the top, instead of 9-7 to 9-7, you'd have to make that 331 to 9-7 because you've got a 331 invoice here. They're saying this, the, this just represents the day of the payments. Not no, the I payment. understand that. Yeah. I, but I, I'm also wondering why we're getting an invoice in, uh, in uh, now it's November or September, going back to March. So your question is why the payments were several <coughs> months after the invoice? Certainly, date? yes. I can respond to that. Do you know the answer about payments? Yes, because I've already right? gone, Rich and I have gone through these oh, okay. invoices. Thank you. Yes, good. So again, this report is about the tra payment transactions. Right. It's not about all the dates of all the invoices. These invoices, no matter their date, were paid on this date for accounts payable transactions. The transactions are the payment of these invoices on these dates. That's why. And the board had this explained to them. Yeah, I, I, I don't want okay. to waste too much time here. Okay, uh, I think so the question other is, question is, is why do we have 331? Right. We cannot pay an invoice until we receive it. That particular invoice we did not receive. So now we've received it, now we pay it. Okay. Okay. So the invoice was And that received. was to Gary the Pace back in March, and you just he, got he that just invoice didn't give us the invoice until it, it on his system he had it but it didn't get mailed to us is my understanding when I asked about it okay okay Harry I don't know why he's mailing out his invoices four months later or six months later not our problem uh, well, it, well, it, well it is somewhat uh, concerning because he is our fee accountant and uh, the timeliness of that bill and then his treasury reports and all of his other stuff that's out here. So I, I still remain leery about that. We do have a question on an invoice here on this, if we're talking about them in order, 9-7. Uh, 
Uh, August 18th, what is this summons and order notice, $45.04? <coughs> Office of the Sheriff, what is that? It's for the Sheriff to serve a notice to the, from, from the court. We're required by law for the Sheriff to do so. And we pay that. And then it, it goes on to the tenant's account. But if we Oh, so this was a tenant that we absolutely had to serve, mm -hmm. and the yeah. sheriff had to do it. The sheriff has to do it. We pay it, but then we get... We, we could get reimbursed from the tenant, yeah. That's the $45.04 thing? Yeah, it's not that? the amount that concerns me. It's the uh, process, I guess. Okay. So this is a tenant that we took, or you took, mm -hmm. to court, but had a sheriff? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Should never happen. Any of the uh, September 7th or any other of the warrants? Did we just approve all the warrants? No, we have the minutes. No, we haven't. Right. Okay. If we're all satisfied, then I'll ask for a motion to approve the warrants of 97 and 97. I move that we approve the uh, warrant report for 97 in the amount of $3,881.76. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? Um, before you call the vote. Yes, sir. Um, since Risa is the treasurer, and she reviews these invoices, I think somebody else, just for checks and balances and financial control, someone else ought to be making the motion to accept the warrant and paid the bills because okay. um, like she's reviewing them. She's reviewing them. Yeah. Well, Someone else should be, and Richie reviews them as well. So it either Sue uh, or me or you, somebody else should be okay. making the motion. Make the motion to. Okay. So there's some there's some coverage. Right, I'm not going to argue with you on that. that. Anybody, uh, Sue, would like to make the motion to approve the? No. I'm, I vote no on all these anyway, so no, I'm not making any motion. All right. There, there, there isn't any reason to exclude people on the finance subcommittee to make the motion. All right. There is no rule that would preclude either Rich or myself from making the motion. Okay. Well, we can look into that if we want to. I'll make the motion to approve the transactions between 97 and 97. Do I have a second? I second it. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 And I vote no. You vote no. <laughs> Any abstentions? You have, sorry. We I have said both aye. say aye. I said aye. Yeah. You said aye. Harry said no and no abstentions. So the motion passes. We'll move on to the transactions between 10-5 and 10-5. We just did, okay. I believe we're at 921. Next page. It's, it's two pages. Yeah, it's together. Yeah, 921 is, is two pages in? Yeah. Missing 921 on here. Okay, so we can just look. Abstain. Everybody else has it. And has no, at it. here it is. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think you do? Do you Yeah. I do too. Yeah. We're just missing a page. Okay. There you go. That's 921. All right. Has everybody had a chance to look at the accounts paid on 921? I have. Okay. Did you have? What? You've oh. looked at the yeah. warrant for yeah. 921? Yeah. Okay. That's the one that totals at 2389636. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> um, do I have a motion to approve? I move that we approve the um, warrant report for 92123 in the amount of 23000 $896.38. Do I have a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? No. Abstentions? Abstain. 
Stain, okay, of the passes. Now we're going to go October 5th, transactions yeah. on October 5th. The summary of this. Is, yeah. Yeah, I can't get it. East total seventeen thousand eight ninety one of change. Again, this is the October fifth warrant. I move we approve the warrant for ten five twenty twenty three in the amount of thank you, David. <laughs> seventeen. Seventeen thousand eight hundred and ninety one dollars and sixty cents. All in favor? No. Before you go to that discussion, yeah, you have the motion and the second to have discussion. <coughs> Race Street mm -hmm. eviction services. Do we get reimbursed for that as well? It goes on to the ledger that when we go after the tenant, and then that's how we would get it. So yeah. the tenant that was this involved involved. Mm -hmm. We have to pay this, the eviction service, and then the tenant's going to reimburse us? Well, it, right. We attempt to get it. We go through collections. We go through the Department of Revenue. So my question is, if they're being evicted and they leave the premises, how are you going to collect this money? We go through a credit bureau, and we go through the Department of Revenue. So we, get, we hand over the information to the Department of Revenue through their Inceptor program, because we're a government agency, and they take all their tax returns, their Massachusetts tax returns, and they will um, take any lottery winnings. And then in this instance, too, the tenant bought a house. We're going to go after them in, in small claims court and put a, um, a lien on the house. They bought a house? They bought a house. Instead of paying the rent, they bought a house. Okay. We probably That's public knowledge. No, it's public record. Public record. Yeah. Yeah. That was my discussion already. They don't pay the rent. Good for her. They buy a house. We evict them. We get charged for the eviction. And now you have to go after the house? Well, we're going to go after the tenant for the, for the payments. We're going to use all means necessary to go after the tenant. Okay, I'm sorry. I missed that. What were you telling them? She was asking that. The well, I, I should hear if there's other discussion going on. We there's were in the no middle of something here. What, well, you said something. What did, what did I you believe miss? he's going to tell us. Okay. She asked that there be quiet in the room when the commissioners are talking. Thank you. Okay. Until public. Until so it had nothing to do with my conversation. Until they're acknowledged right. by, by right. the chair. But I was having a dialogue. Okay, so it's yeah. nothing. I'm sorry. That no, saying. that's fine. I just don't want to miss anything if you're getting some information. Okay. okay. All right, so what's our success rate in getting this money? We've had these in the past, I'm sure, huh? No, this one's pretty unique. This is a unique one, and we just started using the Inceptor program. Um, there's, there's only three housing authorities that are using it, um, but we, I anticipate getting something in January or February when the tax returns. It is only Massachusetts tax returns, so it's probably right. going to be a little bit smaller, okay. but it will be something. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions no, about the, the warrant of October 5th, 2023? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Oh, we already did that. We did that. And we, we seconded it. Oh, yeah. Now we're just okay. voting. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? No. no. Abstentions? Abstain. Okay. Motion passes. Is there another one? <laughs> October 26th, isn't it? October 26th, and then... The last one, right? And then that's the amount that they're paying. All right, we're now looking at the accounts payable record of October 26, 2023. <coughs> the total is $161,279.11. And I move that we accept the warrant report for 1026, 2023 in the amount of $161,000, I mean, $161. Say it for me, Wayne. 
$161,279.11. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes. Um, on 92723, Building 5, Boiler Went Dry, Reset. Would you explain that, please, for $566? Can we wait to, to do this point of order? So we've got a motion. Is there a second? We need. Well, we that comes out. A second for discussion? Open for discussion. Right? All right. Uh, we have a second for discussion. That's Sue. All right. Sue, discussion. Second. Like Richard, you supply him a second? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now the discussion. Now discussion. 927-23, building five, boiler went dry, and to reset the boiler. Would, would there be an explanation for that, please? <clears throat> so it's my understanding what happened. Is, so we're on automatic oil delivery through a, a local company, and it was that boiler went dry before the delivery came. But it happened so, on more than one building during that time. They delivered to more than one building on that day. So, and that's the third time in like almost six or seven months that we have lost our hot water and due to the boiler going so low. And I understand through the grapevine, which, uh, which I can't substantiate it, that we're no longer on watchdog service, that we're the maintenance men are now checking the gauges and notifying when we need oil. And I think that's, if that's so, I think that's why we are having some hot water problems because we're not on this continual watchdog service. So I, I don't know where you're getting the term watchdog service. What is it? Mean okay. that they come like every four weeks or okay. five weeks. So what you just said is absolutely incorrect. We are on an automatic delivery and the, the, for us to keep an eye on what, between the weather and when the delivery comes, maintenance is now doing a check. So maintenance is backing up that automatic delivery to help avoid something like this. And why is so it three times we've lost our hot water? I have the no last knowledge of three times. Knowing that our hearing from the oil people that we practically had zero oil in our in our That's tanks. misinformation. You have misinformation. I'm so, you just do. I'm, I'm, you just do. Well, it's, it's something it's, brand new. I've lived here a long time, and this has just been happening more and more, and it's a lot in one period of time. It's, it's untrue what you're saying. We are on continuous pay, uh, well, deliveries. Maybe, well, maybe we could contact the oil people and... We have it under control. We do. Well, if we are a tenant and have no hot water all day, multiple times, it's not under control. I don't have any knowledge of multiple times. I would like to point something out on this, though. It's, it, um, Carrie had asked some questions in the past about our capital funding and how we use those dollars and where that the dollars come from when we have them. So we just have the window project. And on this warrant report, you'll see on page one, there is a payment to Bradley Architects of $1,000. That was on 828. And then on page two, to diversify construction, there were two payments that show coming in, um, and I can explain the difference of the, the invoice date too, totaling $155,401. So what happens is, is they, they issue these invoices and they go through a cap hub system and they have to be <coughs> approved all along. They have to be approved by the architect they have to be approved by the construction advisor, they have to be approved by the housing authority, and they have to be approved by, ultimately, EOHLC. Once they're approved, then the money that we have set aside in capital funding, which the state holds on to, is released through our vendor web and direct deposited into our checking account, and then we have to turn around and issue the check. So we didn't, um, once everything is approved, it, the money is filtered in to make these payments, and then we, we pay out. But only once we've been reimbursed from the state first. Okay. I will have some more questions along those lines on the treasurer's report, which okay. was prepared by Gary DePace. Okay. Because I see these large numbers here, yeah. but they're not reflected on the treasurer's report. Okay. I'll get to that. I have a question. What's the PHA software quarterly invoice? We, we pay a couple grand a year for the Public Housing Authority yep. software. That's just to access the databases, or that's that's our that's our main software that we use. It's for um, it contains all of our tenant information. It, it contains work orders, our accounts payable, our um, it could potentially do payroll, but we don't use it for payroll. But it's a cloud-based system, and 
uh, Hadley's been using it for decades. Okay. And the state charges us a couple grand a, a year to, to use it. Oh, it's not through the state. It's a private. Oh. It's a private company. Private. Company. Yeah, but they do work with the housing authorities. They <coughs> they've made changes to reports when we ask for them. Um, they do upgrades on it. Um, they work with the state with. You know, now when we do our PMR audits or our AUP audits, there's a nice little button you push and it gives you the information that the auditor would need. Okay. They're very receptive. And the uh, $1,348.91 for the law offices of Elaine M. O'Donnell, PC? Yep. Is yep, that for some ten, ten yep. or Yep. Yeah? Yep. Okay. And we pay the 165 an hour? Yes. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. It was one of the invoices I saw. We had two different rates. Thank you very much. I can't. Uh, all right. Are we ready for a motion to approve? We've already. Big one. Did we do that in a second? This is we've been in discussion? Yeah, now we're ready to okay. vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? No. 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 Three in favor, two against. Any abstentions? Three in favor, two against. This is the transactions uh, dated October 26, 2023. That's it for the warrants. Right. right? Thanks. All right. The treasurer's report dated <coughs> September 30th, 2023. We also have one dated October 31st, 2023. We'll look at September 30th, 2023 first. Uh, I'll ask for a motion to approve this treasurer's report of September 30th. Do I have a motion? I move we approve the treasurer's report of September 30th, 2023. Do I have a second, please? I'll do the second. Second, Richie. Any discussion? Yes. Questions? Mr. Chadwick. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I see in August we had a balance in the checking account of $10,500 or so. It goes up to $83,000 at the end of September. And I'm having, again as usual, <coughs> some challenge getting these numbers to agree based on the warrants that are being paid, and more importantly, we'll have the discussion on the October one as well, because we're paying uh, more than what I see uh, being decreased in the checking account. We're paying these all by the checking account. So, um, first of all, we came in with $73,000. Where did that come from? And How's it accounted for in here in all these reports? I don't see uh, it. So if I missed it, I, I need to see it. Where's the 73 here? I'm sorry. From 10,000 to 83,000. Oh, okay. 73,000. I like that though because it's going the right way. Right. We're getting money, but I don't have a record of where it's coming from. I can't see where it's coming from. So, it, so the, the, the number that you get is the balance at, of, in the checking account at the end of the month. So it's just a snapshot in time. But back in August, we had not been, we had not received a substantial portion of our subsidy from the executive office. So uh, <coughs> Gary DePace and I wrote to um, it's uh, his IO, I can't say his last name. He's at the head of finance in, at DHCD and said, can you please give us our subsidy? We're down to $10,000, we need to pay bills. So we got a chunk of the subsidy coming down. Um, and that should be reflected in the that doesn't happen too often, right, Pamela? No, it does. It, it does happen. You have to happen. call a lot? Yeah, that we have to call. Sure. Yeah, because it, there's really there's one or two people in that department that are handling all the housing authorities. Okay. So it's, you know, people get behind and you just have to remind them they'd like to get paid. And it's like 260-something housing authorities that they're responsible for. 248, yeah. 248. It's a lot. So on that, on page two, it talks about the operating subsidy. 
but you're talking about when do you see it? You want to know when exactly do you see it pop into the checking account? Is well, that what I, you're? I'm not that concerned with the September one as I am with the October one. So, um, <laughs> because October we pay much, much more than a four thousand dollar reduction from September to October. Uh, with the 79,000, but we're taking them individually. The September one, the, the 83,000, that's fine. It's going up. We're getting yeah. money and we're paying bills. But uh, I, I don't see where all these bills that we're paying are being reflected in the Treasury report as prepared by Gary Bookcase. Huh. And again, I have an issue with the numbers and the finances and the accounting and Gary's reporting here. And so, no, it's that's just my so, thing. Right, so again, it is a snapshot in time with that, and then where you'll see that is on our mod report, mm -hmm. where it comes in, and it's... Are we on page three? Oh, no, oh, just I'm Well, I'm on page September. three, and I see the mod cost, but I don't see that anywhere. anywhere. Right. So... I'll have to find out when it came through on vendor web, because she paid it in October, but it could have hit that same day, and then we paid it. Because Gary puts these together. Gary does. Yeah, those are from Gary. And I can't right. tag his numbers together on what's going on. Right. So that's right. I can find that out and I can have the answer for you for December. These were all prepared as of 930, so he would have had I see twenty-seven thousand dollars on the mod for that. And I They're see paper clipped together, so. <clears throat> can I, may I continue? Sure. Okay. I see on your mod page three there, we have some money coming in and some money coming out. 27,000 coming in, 20,000 going out. But that's nowhere near 73,000 on the ending balance. So I, I don't know where Gary puts his numbers together, how he gets his numbers. That's what I vote though. We had a vote on this one here, guys. Yeah, so on the third page, you can see the, the, the credit of 176, 958, 60. That's for under That's the October date. Uh, it's on this this treasure, the October treasure report. Okay. And then on the I was trying page, to keep them separate, but if you want to go to October, I'll go to October. Yeah, that's time. where it's showing that. Because October, we have $161,000 paid for the window project. We have another $23,000 paid on another bill. And the checking account only shows going down from eighty-three thousand to seventy-nine. Right, because it cuts. It's not making any sense. Because it, that that is the balance at the end of the month. So you could have had three hundred thousand dollars in there, but we spent it. That's right, so let's go to the body. Right. So Where is he reflecting? So that? in September, there's twenty thousand. Yeah, so five hundred fifty-seven thousand. Uh, twenty thousand five hundred fifty-seven dollars <coughs> and sixty cents under mod control costs. That's the that came in. Mm -hmm. And then in October, $176,958.60 came in. And then there's an accounting of it under the work plan for that, for those numbers. The work plan number is across the top, the 117082. And then 117084. Oh, he must have these reversed then because credit means we're getting money in. Debit means money is going out. So he's, I, I think he's got these confused. Well, he's showing the money coming in. I see the two numbers, but they're, and I think they're in the wrong columns. And then they go out down here. Yeah, but I, okay. They go out down here. I, I can We good to move on or? Sure. Are we voting on the September 30th treasurer's report? Yeah, we. It, that's the only one we've got up for vote. We've already done our motion and second. So okay. now, if there's discussion, if there's discussions over. overall in favor of approving the treasurer's report for September 30th, 2023, say aye. 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 I'm voting no. 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 Three okay. in favor, two against, abstentions, no abstentions. Okay, moving on to the October 31st, 2023 Treasurer's Report. Hmm. 
I move, I move that we approve the treasurer's report for October 31st, 2023. Second. No second. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Aye. Vote no. 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 <coughs> in favor, two against. Motion passes. That's it for the treasurer's report. Financial <coughs> the end of the fiscal year. Who's gotten through them? I have not. Do you need approval on this, Pamela? We yeah. absolutely need approval. We have to submit these to DHCD, and we need signatures yeah. as well. So this is the, the quarterly, or it's also the fiscal year end. OK, is this the audited financials for the year end? It's not audited yet. It will be audited by the independent auditor. But it's from, it's from our fee accountant, and then it will be audited after the fact. Does the fee account never come in to answer questions or yeah, talk he, about? He does, yeah. yeah. He's, he's come in several times since you've been on the board. No, he was here once that I remember. So I have a question. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> since Gary has put this together, and uh, it does get audited by an independent, is that that Lisa Fallon? Uh, actually, this coming year, it's going to be a different auditor because we're required by regulation to change the auditor every five years. So it'll be a different auditor. I don't know who it is yet. I have to get the list from uh, D uh, EOHLC. All right. So the last five years, Lisa Fallon has done it? Uh, yes. And she's the one that does generally the agreed upon procedures, the AUP audit? That's correct. And when I spoke to her, she told me that that's what she did, agreed upon procedures, nothing financial. But since that, we've had meetings. Gary said, yes, she looked at financials. Yep. And she's also affiliated with his firm, uh, the two of them in Munson, I believe. They are same not address, same, same. They are not affiliated. She rents from him. She rents and they from went him. Through, they went through the State Ethics Commission, and they went through the Executive Office and the Secretary of State to disclose all that information. Lisa, and when do we go out for, I'm not finished, thank you. And when do we go out for the next independent audit? Is there an RFP? Is there a process? No, we have to, we have to use the folks that DHCD has already vetted. So they have a list. We'll get a, a list of the folks that they've vetted. Very much like the regional. And then who audit. makes the decision who will, who will get the job to audit Gary the basis the, the board. The board will His board. His board, yep. Now I'm done, thank you. I understand that the Warren Housing Report has not renewed Gary DePace's contract. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it public record why they did not renew his contract? As their accountant, where, where is you have to talk to Warren. Where is it? Warren has not renewed Gary DePace's contract, and I wanted to know if it was public record why they did not renew his contract as their accountant. So I don't have that information. But you could ask Warren. I don't, I don't run the Warren Housing Authority. I know, but I'm just asking you, is it public knowledge? Another kind of person without I, It is now because you've, you've made that, you've said it in, in a public meeting. So it is now. Well, I know there's a lot of, of um, tenants associations and folks that are really in an uproar that are trying to get rid of the fee accountants, the regional attorneys, the executive directors that have been around for a number of years because they think they can change the, the regulations by doing so. So, but I don't know what's going on in Warren. You'll have to, you'll have to reach out to that. That I would reach out to the board chair. I still have my yes, please. So two things now. Uh, <coughs> Pamela, an AUP does include financial yes. auditing. Mm -hmm. All right. That was my understanding even though it's been brought up time and time again. It includes, AUP includes financial auditing, and that's what Lisa Fallon did, and will, because of regulations, every five years we have to get a new auditor, and we will. Uh, the other thing is, just brought up because of what Sue said, and what Pamela said is, we as Board of Commissioners, according to the ethics laws, 
we do not have the authority to go call Warren or somebody at, at the Warren Housing Authority and ask them anything without a board quorum vote. So I just want to bring that up. If, if, Reese, if, Reese, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm very sorry. Um, I believe you know more than the rest of us put together about the rules of regs. But um, I have to challenge you that before you tell another American citizen who they can and cannot talk to. I'm not. Um, I'm saying if there's a need law a that's if there's, me, if there's I, I'm not done. You, you have you challenged ahead. me. Go ahead. A board quorum vote would solve the problem. So that if any individual board member wants to take it upon themselves, they need to get, we can only act as a quorum. We can only act as a quorum. If any one of these board members here, sitting here, decides to contact someone or say something or get information, it needs to be by a board quorum vote to protect them and to protect the board. We can't say, yeah, Sue, go call this person or that person. Let's have a board quorum vote. So I have a question, <coughs> Commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, now that this has been brought up and I'm hearing this, I'm, concerned, I'm curious why his contract is not being renewed, what these circumstances were. So if you're saying we need a board vote here so that we can designate somebody to call and find out, because I'd be curious, he's our fee accountant, Okay. I'd like to know what went on. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so I would make a motion. Uh, excuse me. We're on the discussion of the financials of the Hadley Housing Authority. When we get into the um, board board discussion, uh, please feel free to bring up this discussion about Warren again. But right now, I, I hope you all guys agree with me that we are trying to approve or table or disapprove of the financial statements as they're approved as they're presented to us today okay so um, do we have a motion to approve or uh, the financial statements the um, financials for the end of the fiscal year so I'm looking for a motion to vote to approve the financials the year-end financial statements of the Hadley Housing Authority do I have a motion I move oh you want to I move that we approve the financials for the end of the fiscal year. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Richie seconds. Okay, now discussion on this. I have a comment myself, but I would turn to you guys. Any questions? Do you feel like you understand it properly? My personal comment is I wish the preparer could be with us even just for a few minutes in case we have any questions about the line items or trends. Um, I try to be a bigger picture guy and ask, does he have, he or she have concerns about any direction we're heading with any of the expenses or revenues we have? Um, does he or she have concerns about the future of the financial strength of the Hadley Housing Authority? Those kind of general questions about the, big, the overview of what's going on with housing authorities and what's going on in Hadley and Amherst and Belchertown. So uh, I myself am going to abstain from the vote and request that the preparer we comes in and meets or if you, you guys allow me to speak to the preparer on the phone. So I, I actually help prepare this as well. I, okay. I'm your CFO and okay. so I work with the fee accountant so okay. I can answer that and this has to be sent to DHCD by the end of the month or it's an audit finding. Okay. And we got an audit finding last year because the previous board re refused okay, to. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my question, mm -hmm. if, with, if you guys don't mind, if you don't have any individual questions on specific issues or line items. Reese, mm -hmm. looks like you're ready with something. Are you just looking it over? No, I've already read it. Okay. I'm waiting to vote to approve it. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else have specific questions or concerns about the financials here and financial statements? If not, Pamela, that's my question. Do you have any concerns about trends in revenue and expenses in anything? Do you I think everything is hunky-dory or? No, it's not hunky-dory. 
No, so it's, please, would um, you mind talking to the board about what your concerns are? Sure, my concerns are, and you'll see it when we get to the new budget for the coming year, is that our budget reserves are down to 45%. We've spent a lot of money this past year on vacancies, getting vacancies ready, and, um, and also uh, legal costs too. And there is, because of the vacancy initiative and, uh, and working with Gary, there are some budget exemptions that we put in the new budget that we can help um, cover that. Plus I have, uh, also because of the vacancy initiative, I have some really good news about more money for um, uh, the vacancies coming through DHCD that's going to help preserve our, our reserves. So we are, we're making good strides towards getting people to actually pay their rent. It's always been a problem in Adley, but it's getting better. Um, so there, but that is a concern right now. Our, our budget um, reserves went down. Now what's the um, red line again for where? 35. 35%, we're at 43%? 45. 45%. 45 so about the quarterly, this quarterly, the year-end budget That's though, right. yeah. you don't have any concerns about what's in this. It's the operating budget going forward that you want to give us some more information about. Well, it's just that we didn't have enough, we did not have enough to cover us for all of our okay. for all of our vacancies that we've been having. Right. What? Sue's Sue. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, Sue. You just throw I, something at me. Yeah. Because of the fact that we still have a lot of apartments available that are mm -hmm. unoccupied, I think bringing up the fact that, that a lot of money has been used to to over, you know, overhaul the apartments. If these apartments are, re are totally overhauled, ready to go, you know, uh, I'm wondering, as a board member and as a tenant, why people are not in them yet. And I don't think that personally that we can we can look at the champs application as the total <coughs> reason why. You, I think that a lot of housing authorities hide behind the champ. Yes, it's a real problem, but I do believe that that a lot of executive directors hide behind the champ application only because I really feel, especially after all those articles that are in the newspaper about the uh, lack of apartments available for low-income people, if they're still sitting there, I feel that it's really a crime that, that this is happening. And, and, I, that, and I also please. feel, this is my personal opinion, when you say that our reserve is down to 46%, 45%, 45 I think when, I personally feel, as a board member, when you say that, it's because you're saying, in other words, don't ask for anything because we're already down so low. No, that's not what I'm saying. No. And it, I think it makes people, when it comes time for voting, like when we voted for audits or when we voted for attorneys, everyone said, oh, well, where's our reserves? Oh, we don't have enough money to do this. I think by you always talking about what's in our reserve, it sort of will make certain board members uh, stop and not vote how they really want to vote because they're afraid they're going to tap into those low reserves. Well, I, so I, I, don't, I didn't come here to be psychoanalyzed. But no, but I'm just telling you. So what, no, hold on. I'm yeah. telling you, I spent too much money. That's why our reserves is at 45%. I spent money on vacancies, and we spent money on legal fees. That's, where, that's exactly where the money went. And now we have a, a change in it. And as far as the CHAMP initiative, if you read the articles that went throughout the state, they most certainly did put it into CHAMP's hand. And then the other thing that DHC recognized is that we don't have enough money <coughs> to put into these vac vacancies. So they're giving us more money. So I have very good news coming up under the capital portion of that. But it most certainly is CHAMP. And our, our units are not vacant ready. The Hadley Housing Authority had 12 units that went vacant in the last year, and we filled 12 units. And but the we, it's just we keep getting more and more vacancies. And because of the fact that we're using our own maintenance man often to do 99% of the work to renovate these apartments, in other years, there was often people here that, you know, that Dion would do the floors and, and painters would come paint. It wasn't your own maintenance team. Right. But when you don't see it, when we only have one day a week here as maintenance, which is Thursday only, That's and we don't see the maintenance here on Thursdays anymore, Hadley Housing Authority is paying Amherst Housing Authority 
for this maintenance that hardly is ever here on the one day that they so are So your Cabinet Housing Authority is charged for when the maintenance men show up. And you have, you have, as a resident, you are fully aware that on Thursday it's tenant-generated work orders. That's what Thursday means. But we don't Other see them anymore. If you don't have a work order, you wouldn't see them. Other than that, they happen. They just finished Unit 23. And then I will. Ha I have the outline of what's happening with the vacancy initiative under the capital. So that's where that is. Okay. Um. Not true. Well, myself, I'd still like to hear from the uh, the preparer if there was anything that, that he or she was concerned with. I don't want to hold up the process, though. Um, any others? So again, you have no big concerns. Everything is. You're saying you spent too much in the past, and you shouldn't have to move it forward next year. Correct. Do we uh, we have a because I applied for more money. All right, and we have some new money coming in, which will be used for renovating apartments. Is that what I heard? Yeah. And, and champ and champ screening. And champ screening. Mm -hmm. And is it true that um, applicants are going to be prioritized that they're from this region, this area in particular? They're, they're still going to be prioritized by the regulations. Um, DHCD made some changes um, where they took the uh, AIG has been uh, going through the priorities um, that are in the system. They took them all out and put them over into AIG's hands. So basically what happened is somebody can go in and they can apply for housing and they can say, I'm homeless because of a house fire. That would give them number one. Or excuse me, I'm homeless because of a, a flood. That's a number one priority. Okay. But then what DHCD made the decision to do is that they drop them to a seven so they stay on the, the main part of the list, but then their information is given to AIG and AIG begins to vet them for the priority only. Um, but that is taking time. They're back. Uh, yeah, it's very, it's very confusing. But what, what was the good thing for Hadley and all the other housing authorities is that we instantly went in after that September 27th meeting and pulled lips, and we our our locals filter right up. That's good. So we do have uh, we have a number of people ready to go, and we just need to now get the apartments ready. Good. So is there any? Th um, what would you say is your biggest headache? Um, regarding the finances moving forward? Uh, right now is getting the approval for the final stamp from the state to get the money and for them to actually give us the money. And they're, they're trying to figure it out. They're, they're trying, they're, the money is going to be filtered through vacant unit turnover money, um, which is a pool of money through the capital, or it, uh, some of it is coming through our budget exemption for the coming year. Um, but they're trying to figure out procurement laws and how we're going to all maintain those procurement laws um, and RCAT and different things and still be able to get these units back online quickly. Okay. So I don't think the number of vacant units has changed. We'll talk about that later. But uh, since I've been on the board, and yet um, we're working on it. Right, because you get somebody that leases up and then we get somebody that leaves. Oh, so you this get is somebody, about, uh, yeah, it's about... Yeah, it's somebody passes away, we have a vacancy, we lease up, it, so it's okay. a wash. So it's That's not about the units, the family units that are still being worked on or anything? Or, we, or do, we do have a... One of the new... We have a new uh, family <coughs> unit, um, and that was the, those folks needed to be moved for a medical emergency. So okay. they were moved. A few months ago I was down there and looking in the windows, there was construction going on. That was, um, they were testing it for asbestos and lead, okay. which we need the lead because it did fall in the time. But that is a that is a capital project already, one of those, uh, one of the units on Berkeley. The other one will be as well. Okay, so Two there's there's things. still a one unit on Berkeley family unit that is not ready for families to move in? There's two. There's, there's a new one now because we, we moved family the folks moved because of a, a medical emergency. And how long has the one that was empty before been empty? That one has been empty. More than a couple of months, right? Oh yes, definitely. Because it's a capital project, yeah. So it has so it has to run through an architect, and it has. Right. It's supposed to be going out to bid. Um, it was supposed to be going out to bid November fifteenth, but the architect is a little bit behind. Okay. So it should be going out any time. And then I guess why we're talking about it when the state came out and walked through. Last week I was here, 
Um, they're they're proposing to give us two hundred and forty nine thousand okay. dollars for the other Berkeley. All right, unit. let's highlight that in a minute here. Um, so are we pretty good at getting apartments ready for new tenants, or could we be better? Or um, it's just there's just a lot of them right now. It is there's just a lot. We we are understaffed, and when I say we're understaffed. So I'm going to try to make this perfectly clear. We have the number of maintenance men that are allowed in our budget and by the number of units that we have. But it's not enough maintenance men for the infrastructure that all housing authorities, and this is a, this is a housing authority problem. I had Representative Mindy Dom come out two or three weeks ago, Halloween, she came out on Halloween um, and went through the Amherst properties and we were really trying to nail that home to her for this new housing bill is that so we I'm fully staffed and have been fully staffed in maintenance but it's not enough maintenance men for us to do the jobs so because we have these management agreements that's how we're able to get more maintenance men because we cobble together part-time here part-time there and make it a, a full maintenance man. and uh, the maintenance people that you do have are as, as good as they should be they absolutely are Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. my question to Pam is, why is it that many years we used outside services like Dion doing the floor, painting companies, and now you're almost 100%, I'm not talking about window projects or big, big projects, you're make, you're, um, the maintenance men are doing 99% you know, of this, who decided that the maintenance is going to do this versus other times when people were called in to do the same work? and they were, had more time dealing with everyday maintenance issues. So there's not enough everyday maintenance issues to have a maintenance man. So uh, two or three executive directors ago, you had a, a, a housing authority executive director that made the decision to go with contracts. Contractors cost more money than a maintenance person does. If they just do, you have, to, you have to pay prevailing wage, you're at when the, the maintenance may, or the contractor can come. So when the Amherst Housing Authority took over, we got, well, I'm sorry, but when Mary Billion was here, she added a 16 hour a week maintenance man to do the tiny repairs, change a light bulb, fix a blind, maybe unclog a toilet. Um, and then they still called in um, the contractor when to do the vast majority of other things. But your budget reserves, you had no money. You spent all your money. So you now you're saving money by having the maintenance man. It's not slowing it down. It, 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 and with this vacancy initiative, they're giving us enough money to hire people to come in and do those. But don't you think it's possible that you're exhausting the maintenance people? I don't. Because of the fact that you said you have the number that's allowed through your housing authorities but in the same sense, it's you just said it's not enough. So you're so when people are working, even if they're union workers, they're exhausted workers, and they're more you know. All I'm saying is that I think a combination of having services come in along with having the, the we do use a combination of them. We've had a painter out here on occasion in the past year. We've had people come and do floors in the past year. We have people that come in and do ramps, do tub cutouts. We use a combination. Well, that's for reasonable okay, okay, so No, it's not just for reasonable accommodation. All right, so um, we have to trust who's ever looking after maintenance and repair that they're making the make or buy decision um, smart, smartly, intelligently, whatever. So who looks after all the maintenance now? Bruce has been gone a while. Mm -hmm. Are you, it's not just you, right? There's something no, else. No, I, I do oversee, but now we do have a new director of facilities, and his name is John Williams, and we're very excited um, to have John on board. Um, he was the maintenance supervisor at the Warren Housing Authority for a number of years. Um, yeah, coincidentally. Um, but more importantly, he has been an RCAP, uh, the Regional Capital Assistant Team, for three or four years. So he is very well versed at capital projects. He came in and he hit the ground running. He knows how to use all the different systems. What, that about, we what about the use. ongoing maintenance and repairs? He, as a maintenance supervisor, he's and he has a, a construction license. Um, so has he come up with some ideas? He's been here a month or two now, or? Mm -hmm. Yep, and he's, re no, he's only been here a month. And a he's, month? Yep, he's seen things that could be done better or smarter or faster? 
Um, well, we're really well set up, David. Thank <laughs> you. We really we follow all the procedures. Um, we follow the management or the maintenance um, binder okay. from DCD. All right. But um, he's very impressed at the level of uh, technology that we have okay. in that maintenance. Uh, but he is going to work to improve workflow for the Good. maintenance guys. Good. And what was so his Guys, I'm just going to comment. He's the director of facilities. Director of facilities. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for being a selfish, but you know, I worked in manufacturing for 20, 30 years. And if we hired a new plant manager, he better come up with some ideas to improve things like workflow yeah. or materials costs or whatever, you know, human resource issues or not. And if he doesn't, we're going to start wondering why things aren't at least a little bit better with, with the new guy. But um, anyway. That's all I wanted to say about Always that. Always encourage um, people a different per perspective. Good. Absolutely. <coughs> One other question on right. this. Um, <coughs> I noticed the expenses were $450,000 against $371,000 of revenue. Have the tenant rents gone down? Because this is a different number than from the prior tenant, years. Yeah, the tenant rents would have gone down be due to the vacancies, and then there are a number of tenants that their income has changed. And so you're in the process of the recertifications right now? Well, the recertifications go throughout the year. They go when the, when the uh, person moves in, or they're due to be done. They're due to be finalized a month prior to. If somebody moved in January 1st, they would have to be completely done by December 1st. Um, so that is an always um, changing number based on people's income. Yeah. If their Social Security went up, down. And if we were to believe these numbers, <clears throat> that would leave us at the end of our fiscal year ending September 30th of a $79,000 deficit. And is that coming out of the reserves of 113000 That's why we're down. I'm not finished, please. Point of order. We're, we are still on the fiscal. We haven't voted yet, and you skipped over to. No, that's where I am. I haven't, right. I haven't skipped anywhere. Okay, thank you. Sorry about uh, that. I, I haven't skipped anywhere. Okay. So you're on the quarterly, quarterly so you're operating You're on the first state. page, correct? The 70 or the 79? So that's that's for the first program. of all. I want to be clear. Am I looking at the right report? Yeah. I'm asking the questions because yes. you, you said I wasn't looking at the no, right. No, no. We've already clarified that, Harry. Okay. So okay. thank you. So now, out of the hundred and thirteen thousand dollars that we had in our reserves, seventy-nine thousand has now been used because of this budget overage on the expenses. Is that correct? That's correct. But, but I just want to point out at the top of it, that's for the four hundred dash one program, which is our seven um, seven. Okay. Well, our family program. The six six seven has a thirty seven thousand dollar deficit, exactly. and the seven oh five has a forty one thousand dollar. Right. So, the, so, and the combination is this gives is me the combination. Gives me everything. Yeah. Yes. So, Sorry. my my clarification is the hundred and thirteen thousand that we had in our reserves has now been reduced down to that forty five percent because we've had seventy nine thousand dollars of more expenses than we had for revenue. That's correct. And I think what David, our chairman, is saying, that expenses generally drive the budget, and we need to look at how we manage expenses, because those are costs that we have control over. Revenues are tenant rents, vacancies, DHCD subsidies, all the rest of that. Right, Am I that, correct? That's correct. But this 79 is the vacancies that we've had. We had a vacancy over uh, a 70, 705 that we did completely from reserves. We had a boiler over there that we replaced. If you recall, we actually replaced two boilers over there. So you expect, so, oh, I no, no. Uh, you expect the reserve to grow then? Yes, it, it'll marginally grow because we're, I mean, we're not raising, we can't raise the rents other than whatever right. falls in the parameters, but we're gonna have, we'll, we won't be bleeding all of this, um, Supplies, contract costs, things of that nature. Right. So there's no big projects coming up or repair. There is, but they're covered. We have them covered, covered. from other other resources. Good. So then, um, reserves should be growing. You say marginally. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it took it took a number of years for us to get where we were. Correct. <coughs> right. um, but we absolutely we're going to okay. be cutting up. All right, guys. Um, I encourage you all to look in more detail. Harry, you've got a good eye for this stuff. Reese, I'm sure you do too. So if you have the inclination when you're at home, look at it, bring back questions to Pamela.
just because we're voting to approve it today doesn't mean we can't ask questions or ask for changes to the date. So I'm, I'm sorry, you know, just, I'm sure Gary DePace would be fine with an email or a telephone call to Thank from you. the board. Okay, from, from any board member? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. You heard that? All right. So I'm going to ask for a uh, motion, please, to... Um, I think we already did that, now we're just voting. Is that correct? Yeah. And we're not voting on the oper operating budget, we're voting on the financials, correct? The year-end. Yes, the year-end. Year <coughs> We've already had our first and our second motion. So okay, all in vote. favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain. Abstain. No here. Okay, three in favor, one abstention, and one nay. Thank you. Can, I, can I walk, um, Mr. Chairman, can I walk you through the other reports that we need to get signed and... Sure. Okay. So this is also for the year end, the fiscal year end. Well, so tell me which page you're looking at. So um, the first page is the quarterly consolidated modernization report. So that's, that looks like this. And that should... Oh. <laughs> Does it have a page number? Does it have a page number? It just says zero ninety eight seventy eight. Right. They should have page numbers. It would be great to have page numbers on these packages, guys. I agree. Okay. Is that what is it? This one? You got it. You got it. So this is just an um an a, again, a snapshot at the end of the year where three of our active fish projects or capital projects are. It will show you the funds, um, the funds approved, and these are DCD funds. So if you do, re if you recall the window project, we also have town CPA money too of seventy-five thousand dollars, and then it will show you how much we've expended. And again, a snapshot at the end of the year. And, and where we are. So all three of these, this is not the final report and they are still open projects. So we just need a motion to approve. Um, where does the CPA money show up? The CPA money doesn't go onto this report because this is a county, this is an accounting to the executive office of their, the funding that they're giving us. Okay. Interesting, so they don't care how much we raise independently? Well, they will, but they won't account. They don't. We don't have to account to it to, to them. It does go through this, the system. This, yeah, the sure system, yeah. Okay. And are these numbers somewhere in this report here that you put together? Yes, it would be that last page that we were that page three of the um, where it shows you the mod report. So mod for modernization. Oh, I see. Yeah. That we were show that where you thought I mean, that you the credits talking. and the debits were were mixed up. And the active one that you see is the one one seven zero eight two, which is the window project. It's on the treasurer's report. Treasure, I'm sorry. And not sorry. this report. That would be under. It's not this report. It's right here on the treasurer's report. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Right. It's the modernization balance sheet, though, too. Further, it's further down. Modernization cost control. There's a, there's sheets for those two. Here. What? I'm sorry. There's modernization balance sheets further in the packet uh, for the for the quarterly operating statements. It's at, at the very end, the last three pages of this report of the big of the quarterly one. Yeah. Where were we? We just need a motion and a vote. 
and this is to approve? It's to approve this one. So oh, I, I move we uh, uh, vote to approve the quarterly consolidated modernization cost report. I have a second. I'll do a second. Yeah. Motion made by Reese, seconded by Richie. Any discussion on the quarterly consolidated modernization cost report? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, no. No for me. No. So four in favor, one against. Thank you. You get the job. Then. What next? Okay, and then they're going to have. Um, so there's some annual forms that we need to fill out as well. So this is a certificate of compliance with notification procedures for federal and state state laws. So this is just saying that the housing authority is in compliance with those forms. When we have a, um, when we rent a unit, we supply all the forms. The Berkway is too new to have any lead paint. So there's, it, everyone is given that information. Um, and even in, in the um, CL, elderly housing as well, it shows that there's, we've, we give the appropriate forms at least up that we are required. So we just need um, a vote that says that we're uh, we're following the federal and state paint lead paint laws, and then each of you do need to sign. I'll make that motion to approve this. Please, one. thank you. <laughs> if I may, how would you know if people are getting these documents? Because I'm, I'm I'm believing our executive director. Are you going to trust me <laughs> <laughs> uh, on this? It's on ADA. This. You, it's Numbers and finances. No, okay. this yes. That's why I made this motion. Okay, thank you. Mary. It's in the PMR. Thought. You're welcome. David, if you could sign. Let me participate when I'm comfortable. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Do I have a second? Plus, we have to sign this. I second. Oh, we all have to sign it? We do. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. I'll say chair. I'll turn That's chair. why I made the motion. Thank you. Okay, what else you got there, Pat? So then I have um, this, at the, at the end of each fiscal year, the housing authorities have to do a check and balance with how the folks are paid, and they, DHCD looks at the top five earners. Now, the Hackley Housing Authority has no employees, and it, so it shows that that's there. So the Amherst Housing Authority, which has all the employees, does the same thing. Okay. And it shows that the commissioners are aware of how much everybody's been paid, and it shows the actual payroll that they're paid. So that, there's a checks and balance okay. for that, well, too. So that would be, um, there's that one, and then... Um, well, I don't know how much people are making. Am I supposed to know? Uh, you would if you were paying us. I mean, if you'd like to know, I can send you that information, too, because it's public record. Yeah, no, But I can right. absolutely send you that information. Um, you know, what do we have to do for that? Sign it, vote on it, or show it? Yeah. Uh, this one, you're going to vote on it, and the, so there is a certification of the top five, te five compensation form, which I explained was... Um, nothing, it's zero. And then the certification of the year-end financial statements and tenants accounts receivable data, which is what you actually already approved. So there is, um, there's a check rate in the middle. So you just need to make a, a motion to do the, the top five compensation as zero, and, but then you're all gonna sign this with the check in the middle because that shows that you approved um, you approve both. And then so for Harry, who did not choose to vote in favor of the budget, you would just, you could certify the top five only, but you still have to sign. And it, it gives you that option of what you're, but you do still have to sign. I understand. Okay, so you're not alone. I understand. <laughs> okay, so what's happening here is because we are in a management agreement with Amherst, we ourselves have no employees, so we don't have to worry about the top five salaries. Mm -hmm. Just the one we're doing. I think that's what we're doing now. Yeah. And where, where am I putting mine? So if you, I, I would this go, one? I would go down further to the ones that aren't checked there, and then you would certify just to the top five. Who, who, who checked all these? I, I started to check them, and so Reese and uh, Richard could sign oh, there. Why don't we take them in the order okay. so we don't get confused? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And then tell me, check the one I'm supposed to check. Okay. 
Top five only. Saturday, you turn it back. This coming Saturday, turn it back. Do you have the senior meeting to it ourselves? Do you have this? Yeah. Can I have it? But then you know Okay. Okay. And what, anything else you got there? No, I made a mistake. Well, we are at because, because I did the certify only. It should have been certified to fall. Oh, I, okay. I made a little check mark there. Is that okay? Yeah, that's not going to be fine. Oh, oh, yeah, but I made a check mark under there too. So, certified to fall. Certified to fall. Did you want this? Certified to fall. Okay, so if you could sign it, this is the actual. Yeah. So, this is the annual operating budget yeah. that will be next. I haven't gotten the last one to sign. I'm yeah, waiting, I had to I'm waiting for to this. Sue and I are waiting for this sheet. Yeah, I had to. Yeah, I had to. Okay. Right. And what is the sheet? Okay. That's what you voted with respect to this. This one's Harry, right? That's correct. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't recall how you voted. I know I only voted for this. Okay, David, you signed here, but then Harry signs there. So did you okay. vote yes to vote or? Which one? Uh, to both the year end budget and to the lead paint? I voted yes for the lead paint, and for the year end budget, I did abstain. So I wanted to carry your abstain from the year end. So you want to you want to check because where, this is the yeah, only one just I'm, like that. Um, is exactly where Harry checked, that's where you want to check. Mm -hmm. so where he <laughs> signs, I have to sign where he signs. Right underneath, but you'll check the same box that he checked, which was is certified to the top five only. So right under, okay, let me. I did what I did. No, yeah. what she, I don't know what she voted. Yeah, we just took. Okay, Sue, so just sign at the very next one, and you'll be signing the same thing that Harry signed. Did the lead thing one go back already? No, no, it's. it's I had this right here. Because give, give it a second. This, we signed this, didn't we? Okay. Pamela, did we sign this one already? You've already no, signed. No, we're, we're... That's the top five conversations. That's the first one, I thought. Yeah. I should go back to Pamela. Yes. Right. We did. We, we signed it. We all signed it. We're all good. There is more signing to come. I'm so sorry. Yes. That's why it was easier when we did this. Okay. But that's good. That's so the year end is done. Yeah. All right. So now we have the operating budget for the new coming year. For the uh, upcoming year. Where's their, their new copy? Okay. So I would like to collect the um, the budgets that you have in your binder, and I'm going to replace them. Uh, Gary DePace and I worked, and Gary finalized it on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, the new revision to get more money. Um, so we're going to craft it. Okay. You take one and pop it. Yeah. I'm going to collect the over there. Take one and pass the other. It's the take these because we've got a revised budget that's more up to date since we found out we're getting more money. All right. I, I'm going to make a point of information just for mine. Mm -hmm. I'll, I've got the binder at home with the old one. Why don't you keep this one for the who takes my place? because I won't need this after next month. Okay. So why don't you keep mine and okay. give it to the new person who succeeds me. Okay. Because I don't want to lose it and you can provide it to them. Thank you. Okay, so these are riches in mine. That's right, we yeah, did the whole thing? That's right. Yep. Okay. Did right Sue, so did you show me? Could you give Sue the new one? I'm giving Sue the new one. Don't you think yeah. it would be better to put it in your book so she wouldn't have to do it at a later date? Okay, give me your old one. It doesn't matter. Just give me your old one. The one on this one too. And I still need a new one. Yeah. yeah. So give me your old one. I don't have it with me. No, you, you did. It just came in your. It's in your pocket. Uh, it's in your pocket. I just gave her a new one. Pamela's going to keep the new one for the new person. Yeah, but you're going to vote on this today. Well, I. It was the one I sent you. So I'm giving you this one back, right? Yeah. Oh, you printed up the. Yeah. Okay, so the only change. Let's just get back to that. 
So everything else in the budget is the same, and then the, the changes that we made are because of the budget initiative and figures that we got. So I'm just going to pull up. We, we're going to have to sign it back here. I just want to check you up. <coughs> well, we'll have a fresh sheet. Yeah, yeah, no worries. All right, well, we haven't had time. So the, re I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the reserves are, um, the revenue is $420,553,000. Expenses have increased to $439,053. And the subsidy is 188,553. And then I'll draw attention to page three of eight. So we are we are requesting additional legal services fees of three thousand five hundred dollars. And then we are also increasing under the vac vacancy initiative. Please hand me my package. This you is the you, one I, want, I want to compare. What was the year last year? Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. And the vacancy initiative, um, ten thousand uh, four hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. So that's coming. That would come through the budget. That's not the big pop pop of money that I was talking to you folks about. But if you go through the budget. Um, It lists, you know, everything that we typically list: the revenue, expenses, the administrative costs, maintenance. Um, it, it'll gives you an outline of unit size and apartment size, uh, bedrooms, number of bedrooms, the non-utility cost and the annual. So we get, we get part of our subsidy covers our utility costs. The schedule of all salaries is not in here, but we will be talking about the management fee, the latest management agreement fee, and just uh, solidifying that current figure, because that hasn't changed. Um, you'll see on page five of eight, our workers' comp insurance, the property insurance, the truck insurance. We are anticipating um, a budget revision at some point for property insurance. We'll, we'll do it all at the same time as we can if there's any other changes. Any time a, a line item changes plus or minus 10%, we have to do a budget revision. And um, we are anticipating the property insurance to go up significantly because those costs have risen um, and payouts, especially on the coast and with storms and things, um, property insurance is going up. So we do ex expect to have a budget revision for that. We put that out to bid, or how does that work? That comes through um, through the Executive Office of Housing. They so they were kind kind of self insured, but not really. Uh, Matt, the the the, huh. the workers' comp insurance is self insured through Mass Naro. All, all the housing authorities pool the money together, and we get a better rate that way. But it, it does come through the Commonwealth. The truck insurance um, we do not go out to bid. It is a local a local company. <coughs> um, on page seven of eight, you'll see the budget reserves, what we're calculating for this coming year. And I do anticipate this to change with all the money that we're getting with the budget with the, through the capital side. <coughs> I'm hoping we're going to land better than the 45% for this coming year. And then on the back on page eight of eight does show you some of the, um, our current legal expenses travel um, travel and mileage the, the spring and fall conference um, spring conference we have a thousand dollars but that may filter towards the fall conference uh, spring conference is at UMass so it'll be much more accessible and affordable for local housing authorities in Western Mass so we'll save a little bit of money there that's the first time it's ever in the West isn't it in my time frame, yeah I don't, I don't ever recall it okay being anywhere else um, and then the contract costs are down below and that shows you all the different from our alarm alarm system exterminating rubbish snow removal boiler maintenance painting electrical plumbing janitorial services 
So we do contract out to, for like painting and stuff like that. This year, this coming year, we've got, and I, and I do anticipate this changing again because of the initiative, $8,000 in painting, $8,500 in electrical, $6,000 in plumbing, and then miscellaneous, we have another $4,000 for whatever comes up, for whatever comes up. So that's the main part of the budget, but, the, but then there will be other votes too. So. <coughs> So this would be the motion. This is the theory. I know you don't want to vote on it, but do you want to read it? <laughs> well, uh, um, I have to sign it. It's your budget, but requires the entire board to sign the yes. budget. Yes, correct. So if I have to sign the budget as a board member, I have questions on a lot sure. of these numbers. Absolutely. That's why I wanted to look at so last year's. I know this is last year's. And yep. This is new. Yeah. A lot of the same. A lot of the categories are the same numbers. They are because it, either if they it, we're able to maintain that figure or we we filtered money somewhere else. So this year the budget allowed. I have to, I'll look up the exact figure, but it was like seven percent above last year's revenue. Yeah. And then we're allowed to, to fit that within the budget in the, in the different line items. So if we had a line item such as, um, like water and sewer, if water and sewer stayed pretty stable, we would keep that line item and we would filter the mon money somewhere else like contract costs to get a plumber out or um, whatever else we wanted to fund. But it stays within these same categories. Right, so those categories stay the same amount of money, even though if you look at the actual expenses, they might be less or they might be more, but you're, make, you're keeping the same budget number and making the adjustments elsewhere. And no. I'm only asking the question because you're going to require me to sign your budget going yeah. forward. No, no, it's a good, it's a good question. No, we would, we would um, some things we keep level based on if we're able to keep that, that number like our 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 cost with Cintas, it's a it's a flat budget of you know we pay eighty two dollars a month for an eye wash station that stays the same it, it, that hasn't changed so that that contract cost would stay the same excuse me um we would keep that line item the same postage we're doing a lot more postage that should go up a little bit to to compensate um, salaries have gone up which are not reflected on your budget. So that, that number stays the same. Um, the only thing that goes up is the management fee. If the management agreement went up, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll call for a vote on the annual operating budget. Um, do I have a motion, please? Mm. I move that we accept the annual operating budget for the next Fiscal year. Can you read that, that motion? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's right in front of David. Is it this one? No, it's the one right there. Yes, please. And that gives you the, it's very detailed of what. Okay. Uh, so. Right there, yeah. I bet that uh, we accept the proposed operating budget for state aided housing of the Hadley Housing Authority, <clears throat> Chapter 667-705. Those are the only two we have right now. Uh, program number 4001 for fiscal year ending 9-30-2024, showing total revenue of $420,553 in account number 3000, and total expenses of $439,053 in account number 4000, thereby requesting a subsidy of $188,553 in account number 3801, and further that the executive director's total annual salary of $0 for fiscal year ending 9-30-2024 be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development for its review and approval. Okay, so that's my motion to, yeah, for a second. Can you make the motion? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can, I a, can I have a second, please? No, second it. Second, Richie, on the operating budget. Any other discussion? And, okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Because they're your numbers, you put them together, you better live with them. 
I'm voting yes. Sue. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> we have four yes, eyes. Do I have any applause? One abstention. I think one one more time abstention. To look at them. Wow. Excuse me. The so motion passes. I will add one thing, though, on the budget. As the year progresses and you're looking at these line items and how things are progressing, if fuel costs go up, oil, whatever, yeah. you make those adjustments when you pay the bills and all of that. That's all the operation under your jurisdiction. Right, you see that every month, and then if it, it if it goes up plus or minus 10%, then we come to the board and we have to do a budget revision. Yeah. So it's a work in process <laughs> as the year unfolds, but you have a budget. Absolutely. That's why I voted yes. Right you. Excellent. You're very well. Yeah, great. Right. So right, I'm, passing around, I'm passing around the signature page for this, too. Right. Everyone does have to sign, regardless of how you, you voted. Um, and then the other part of it is it is in the budget, but they do like. So this is the management agreement worksheet that we did just when we renewed the contract. So you're, it's just here again, and then you would be voting on that the um, it shows you that the you would be paying thirty seven thousand if you had your own executive director you could at most pay thirty seven thousand nine hundred ninety five license page I don't know that's not hmm. let's see do we have the old budgets these are the old budgets yeah, what was that number we could pay no, thirty seven thirty seven thousand thirty seven nine sixty five Thirty-seven. I'm sorry. Nine sixty-five. Your name's already printed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that the so the the negotiated management fee that we had when we re-signed this and that is is in place for this current budget is forty-seven thousand four hundred and fifty-six dollars, and that's in the budget. So you just need to make a motion and vote that you're you know that that's the figure that's in there. And approved. So just say, I move that. Yeah, the, 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 I move that we, uh, is it approved? Um, I would say confirm. I move that we confirm the management agreement amount of that one? Yep. $47,456. For this next fiscal year, 10 1 2023 to uh, September 30th, 2024. Correct? That's correct. Yeah. What, what was the number? 40? It's 47,456. I thought we had 37,960. No, that was last year. No, it's it, so the, the, it shows you how much you could pay your own director, and then with the worksheet that DHCD gives out. Do you see the page that she has there? They allow you to get 1.5% for the management agreement fee. And that allows, a, a, a allows you to supply maintenance, staff yeah, time, maintenance et cetera. Maintenance we build through. It, it yeah. just yeah. admin time. Admin time, okay. And that's the figure that we've always negotiated, is the 1.5% yeah. over. Yeah. That's what the current management agreement is. So this is a separate motion? What, what, uh, I've already moved, you want a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Any other discussion? This is the management fee calculation worksheet approval. But we've already yeah, approved that's, that. That is in your packet here. Right? All, all, all those in favor? It's just confirming it. Oh. We've already voted on it last. I don't know. All those in favor of confirming? I don't, I don't have that. Aye. Aye. No. No, Harry? No. But what is it? Just confirming what we already I don't have this in my packet. It may not be in the packet, but I remember seeing it, but we could see the management agreement. It's attached to the old budget. That's the old case. It's attached to the old budget. It, uh, it was all attached to the old budget. Okay. In the oh, we, did we hand it in the old budget, so it's attached, you're going to have to get yeah. the old budget. Yeah, here, here it is, right here. Okay, so it wasn't attached to the new budget, the revised budget. I wonder how much it cost to have all that stuff printed up. A lot, unfortunately. Lots of trees. Lots of trees. All right. 
this signature page is for the budget. That's just for the budget. Not the management fee. That's correct. Budget. Well, the management fee is in the budget, but yes. But the management fee requires a separate vote. Just right to solidify that that's what what we've been paying. Do you I'll take it now. Okay. And then she just needs to say that. And All right. Good to go. What else? Anything else to be signed, panel? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so we're, you. We're very good. Oh, yeah. You've got the union vacancy reports. <laughs> Who reads this off? That would be me. I'm sorry. Now, listen, okay. part of your. What are we on now? The window, no. Yep. Unit vacancy report. Yep. So we do, we had one move in and, and one, unfortunately, we had a passing. So it's pretty much looks the same. So four at Golden Court, and then as of September 30th, it was one at Berkeley. But in, this, in October, we moved the other resident out. So there's that, there will be, you will see for um, the October report that it's two. So there's two on Team Berkeley. How fast do you think you'll be able to fill those apartments at Berkeley? Well, the one, the, the current one that's about ready to go out to bid, I would estimate four to six months based on construction because the contractors are behind, unfortunately. That's the Berkeley? Uh, that's the Berkeley. The other one with um, the $249,000 price tag that the HCD put on it, or HLC put on it, I anticipate that to be, and the, the unit is not in good shape. You build a house for that much, I don't understand. Right. Prevailing some wage. Some stage. 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 Right. Yeah. You have to pay prevailing wage. So there's just that, and then we What's have- some, let me ask you, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure. Let me ask you, what's the rent at Berkeley? It depends on the tenant's income. Yeah, all income what's is- What's the range, approximately? The, the range is approximately from $125. Yep, to, um, uh, I think the highest rent over there is $1,100. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's a big range. So, all right, so to estimate how much we lose by not having income for five months, you can't really do that. No, based on the tenant, but we still, re when we have it in a project and we have it approved a wa waiver, we still get the subsidy for the unit. So that does help the housing authority. Okay, that's something. Yeah. Okay, that's and it. And then um, the report, the tenant accounts receivable is still, if this has been updated since October, we'll have better figures. Um, we had a, a very successful uh, court intervention with one of the tenants that owes a significant amount of money that we're able to get that tenant into a repayment agreement, um, clear up late fees, and get them, preserve their tenancy while we're getting the money back from the housing authority. So that should show um, favorable. Good. It'll be better next month. It'd be great to see this put into a chart form so the commissioners could see whether numbers are going up or down. Just a casual suggestion here. Okay. So work orders, window project update. Yep, yeah, so the work orders, um, we had one inspection, <coughs> five requests. Uh, they've been working on the uh, two vacancies here. They did just, they did finish one of them. And then you can see on the, the next couple of pages, the um, further breaks out from emergencies, inspections, on-call emergencies, um, more requests um, and scheduled scheduled maintenance. We did just remove uh, a lot of ACs from the windows. I did get, um, I have knowledge of lots of folks that are going to be putting in a reasonable accommodation now that we have new windows to keep their ACs in. Okay. I haven't received all the paperwork from the tenants, but um, I don't think it's really going to be a big deal. <laughs> they'll, they'll be able to keep them in. Good. So. I, I really like this format where you divide it out into types of maintenance, like the emergency, the on-call, uh, et cetera, on-call emergency inspection, et cetera. It's a really nice format. Thank you. Well, the, and, and that is from PHA, though, and that's, that's where um, a, a good indication of where the, that software company works with the, with mm -hmm. the executive office because then when they do the PMR audits, which is 
uh, that includes maintenance and how timely, we do have to break it down into those categories. Yeah, so that's great. Okay, thank you, Pat. Uh, we're on the uh, board correspondent. Oh, can I do the capital? I'm sorry. Just Did I miss something? Yeah, yeah. the capital window project. Yeah. Oh, so not just so the window to project is done, and there is a certificate of final completion that is um, that the architect approved, the construction advisor approved, I approved, and then it still just needs approval from. HLC before it comes to the board, and the board will make the final determination that the project is is completed, and that we can pay out the contractor. So that's still that that will probably be a next month's meeting that we can pay that. Okay, so the second part that of the help, which we've talked a little bit about it today, but is um, the vacancy initiative. Is there there is that one side where I can we can go through a budget exemption and ask for that additional ten thousand four hundred and some odd dollars. For, uh, for units that we've already started to work on. The other part of it is where um, the construction advisor or facilities management person, and in, and in our case, it was our construction advisor, Tom Boyer, met with me um, and John Williams, our new director, and Kyle Curtis, our maintenance supervisor, and we went into every vacant unit. Um, and the, um, the not only are they giving us funding that we could hire a contractor to to come out and replace some things they're giving us money to get our units up to a, a position that we're not going to have to if the tenant moves out in a year they're going to be really good units they're going to have new cabinets that are solid cabinets as opposed to some of the units here to have particle board on the side which is a little surprising um, but they're going to get rid of those. Um, two of our 667 units, um, I have reasonable accommodations from both an applicant and an internal tenant. Um, and they're giving us $50,000 for each of those units to get those to have um, more of an ADA type. It's not going to be a full ADA unit, but a uh, bathroom facility. So that's going to be really good. Um, the remaining of the units here were not overly bad. We, we got really great con um, cost um, for a guy to come in and refinish the floors. Berkway has beautiful, excuse me, um, Golden Court has beautiful wood floors. Um, and, you know, over time they need scuffing up and, and refinishing. So we got some good prices for somebody to come in and do that. Um, cabinetry in those ones as well. Um, so they're putting about uh, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on each of those remaining units. But the Berkway one that did not have a capital project, which is the newest one, they're talk they're two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars. So this is above and beyond the capital money that we got through the annual plan with the five year plan. Um, it's it's a huge amount of money that the state is is offering up to us. Um, so we're just waiting for the final approval. That'll come to the board, and they'll be. You have to accept the funds, accept that the contract for financial assistance is being extended. Um, but it's a it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, it's my understanding from working with HLC that not all housing authorities are taking advantage of this, um, which I don't know why they wouldn't, but. I, that's not my place to say. Yeah, but, good for you for getting the money. Yeah. Um, but we are, so we have a lot of money coming in that hopefully will help shore up our, our budget reserves, um, stabilize that, and get these units back online. And as I mentioned, the champ, the, the change in the champ, we, um, we have three people already vetted and ready to go. It's just maintenance ready. Okay. Now at this point, we're waiting maintenance ready. Good. So it's, it's looking up for sure. Thank you. Welcome. Guys, we've been at this already for an hour and a half plus hour and three quarters. Am I right? Yeah, it'll be two hours and ten minutes. But there's a couple of things which I did not want to delay and keep delaying, especially a review of the policies. Um, and the recent Harry and, and, and Richie, I got to ask you guys, well, at what state are the, um, the policy reviews that you guys had worked on that? Um, do we have revised or reviewed policies to present to the whole board for their review? No. I know they're going to Pamela and the tenants at some point. Do you want a report? 
Okay. Okay, so our report is, uh, Rich and I, re we look through every single local policy, and those are the ones that are only for Hadley Alling Authority. They have nothing to do with what the state requires. So we look through all of them, and there were two policies that, uh, we'll see you brought up, the common area and the garden policy, the, you know, flower bed po policy. And so Rich and I worked on it. We have it in draft format. As I have reported before, it is sitting with Pamela, who has been, I understand, crazy busy since August with this vacancy initiative. And now you've got to, in the window project, and now you've got the renovation initiative. So we're waiting for Pamela to be able to sit down with us and go through those and tell us what she recommends. Our thing is, as a board, we don't want to sign our name to a policy that, that violates local or state law. And there's other things that Pamela knows that other housing authorities do that maybe we haven't thought of. And these need to, since they affect tenants, we, Pamela's already said she wants the tenants involved at least when we get it into draft form. So we have it in a draft form. It's ready to go. Pamela will review it. And you then my understand is that we take it to the, to we the talk tenants. to the tenants about. Yes. So you say it, you mean them? You mean all the policies? No, no, we. Just the two, the two. The, the you one. have to understand these policies take a lot of work. Oh, okay, okay. So, so we, we have, um, as, Mr. Chairman. As I will finish, as, as Sue has suggested, we worked on the common area policy and the garden policy. We have also reviewed every single local policy. Excellent. And and so Thank you so much. Let's Excellent. get through those two and then we can, you know, take on okay, Mr. I'm Chairman. Gonna ask, I'm gonna Okay, so we have brought up the common policy and the grounds policy over and over at meetings. We've yet to see them in front of us. Why don't you give us the, um, the the worked on copy so we can bring it home and look at it before it goes through Pam? You're you're talking about her name is Pamela, sir. Pamela, I'm just asking <laughs> to look at them because how many times do we have to bring up these two policies specifically? We've asked for okay, okay. So and want so and want to see them. Thank so you. can you give us because it said copies of? So I was expecting to see these worked on copies, not not the final draft of these copies, but what you I'm not so sure where you're talking about copies of what? Right, there was so nothing like guys. that on this so, agenda. So I don't want to drag out a lot of what we did and didn't do in the past. Well, this is that. an important thing because yes, we brought is. it up so many times and I think we should address it. So moving forward, I'd like all the commissioners to review your work up to date. And um, we don't have to take votes, we don't have to edit. But I'd like all of us to see your revised revisions, any changes you have, and for our, just for our consideration and to get ready for further discussion. Obviously, you're not ready to hand over copies to us today, but um, I either want a special meeting or I'm going to ask you to leave them at the office or something. So let's sort of all of us pitch in to try to move towards some revised policies. And I'm never going to blame Pamela for not getting to stuff in time when she's got so many other things on her plate. But if you want to start with those two, that's fine with me too. If you, but I if, thought we were starting on them today because we have to do it eventually. Okay. Sometime that we bring it so up. So I don't if think I they're ready just, today to be handed out. Yes, if I can just say, so again, these, especially in policies that affect the tenants, we really need, I need to meet with the tenants, not the commissioners. It's the, it's the housing authority needs to meet with tenants to get the tenants input on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it has been brought up and up, up because of the, the window project. But it was an issue that was not supposed to be very, being brought up at that time okay, because so it was personal. But, so I would really like to have the opportunity to meet with the tenants um, and I'm, to review it too to make sure that there's I will never get in the way of you meeting with the tenants mm -hmm. and um, having us review at least these first two Again, we'll put it off for another no, time. No, I'm saying yeah. let's, let's get those <laughs> in the next few days from you guys. And Pamela, you meet with the tenants whenever you're ready, whenever you think that we've all talked about them and reviewed them, if that's the procedure you want. I don't care about when you meet with the tenants. I'm super happy to have the tenants 
review these first two policies. They obviously affect everyone's lives. Well, I would like as a board in to the meantime, the I would like the board, all it. five of us, to review these first two policies, the outdoor policy and the garden policy. Sue, I know this has been a, a an important thing to you, and, right. I don't, and I'm embarrassed that the months keep passing by and we've never reviewed or discussed them. Pamela, you do anything you want with the tenants. It's got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I just want all the commissioners to get up to speed to the, with the good work that Richie and Risa have done so far. And we can either keep our mouths shut moving forward next time we meet about ideas we have. Um, if Pamela's met with the tenants and has those ideas first, great. I don't care what order we all make our opinions about the revised. But I just, excuse uh, me, Mr. Chairman, I think that the board should take a look at them before they go to the tenants. Because one of our I've duties as a say. commissioner is to look at policy. Okay. It's to okay. view it. It's to prove it at, at the final edition. But again, the tenants do have an input. Into we might get some said. good ideas from the tenants. And so we might get some like, good you're ideas you're from- You're kind of out, of out of order here, but if you want to go out of order, that's fine. Just for those two policies, because we brought them up so many times. No, so I'm so sorry, you have brought it up. You brought it up during the window project. And it's because important. Yes. We'll but it should have been, been, been brought up again, and that was a little bit of an ethics problem. What do you mean brought up again? We brought it up so many times on the agenda, and it's never been it. dealt with. How many times have to put it on the agenda before it's done? Look, it's winter time. I don't know how urgent it is to discuss the outdoor space and gardening policy. But Pamela brought up a really good idea. I think I mentioned this at the last meeting. I had talked about doing some plantings, and Pamela kind of interrupted me with a better idea, which is what about a real landscape plan for Golden Court and Burke Way? We've got two famous landscape academic organizations within 10 miles of us here. One up in Conway, the School of Landscape Design, and one at the University of Massachusetts, the Department of Landscape Design, and I forget exactly what its proper name is, who I've worked with before. Um, they're all good people. Um, the faster we can all get our opinions on the table early, maybe the rest of the summer, you know, February, March, January, February, March, can be used to bring in a couple of maybe grad students or professors who would look at our plan, give us two, three, four hours of their time for a reasonable price or no price. And um, by April or March, you know, planting time, we will have all reviewed what we think would work for this place and we'll end up with a more beautiful place to live here. So I'm just trying to move it from the commissioner's standpoint along. I think the tenants are going to have better ideas than we have because we live here. You and Sue live here, Reese, so your ideas are going to be the most interesting of all. Did you want to go follow the agenda and go through all agencies? No. So let me today? let me look at this right now because uh, our meetings have gotten too long. I didn't realize we'd be doing the document signing and stuff. It's all very important stuff. We have another um, the the uh, PHN. The public housing notice 2023-05 we wanted to discuss today. I think we're getting to be out of time. Um, and then Sue, you asked for some um, other documents from Pamela. I hope you can get those off camera and just would you take care of that off camera? Aren't they in the board binder? Well, I asked for it in the meeting. It's on the meeting agenda. So I was hoping they would be here at the meeting. They're right here. Okay. Right. They're right here. So okay, great. Thank, thank you, guys. Out. So, um, Risa, can you take the lead? Can you take the lead on this? Can you show us the initial revision of the outdoor garden um, policies as you've done? And leave them for and us. Three copies. I don't have copies with me right here because I didn't realize. Not today. Not today. Oh, okay. it's only on the agenda. Can I help? Um, so Reese had um, emailed me the revisions for me to look at. I could I could send those out. Beautiful. To I didn't know that. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I can email okay. them all to the board. And again, I'm going to repeat it since there's argument it seems about this. This is not to discourage or interfere with the tenants looking at this stuff and Pamela having a chance to meet with the tenants about this stuff or talk to them individually about it, I don't care. I just don't want the commissioners to be way behind the curve when when, this, when the uh, suggestions come forward. I would like to say that, okay, so Pamela has offered to mail out the 
uh, email out the, the drafts that, of those two policies that Rich and I came up with. Just please, everyone, they're rough drafts. We followed a template out of a university. So if the format is off-putting, Right. or the language is off-putting, right. it's just because and, that's the... Right, and please consider these confidential documents. Yes. If there's, if you know how to do that over stamp thing when you email stuff? Uh, confidential, Sue, you can put I a... I think that's a good point. Yes. Yes. She's here. So you can put a watermark, you know, you do a, put a watermark saying confidential. So these initial drafts are not public, okay? And uh, Pamela, if you could put a watermark on them saying confidential. Do we, get, or do we all understand that? It's not going to be shared with Mel King, Sue? Well, as you say, that. there's copies that are sued for every Mel King or, or the tenants union or Warren Housing. It's okay, they're confidential. All right, I don't want to uh, focus on individuals here. All right, no, thank you guys. We thank you very much. All right, uh, I don't know if we'll have any opinions or updates on ourselves. Harry. Yeah. Did, did we go by the commissioner's discussion? No, we're in it right now. Oh, okay, because, all right. And if there's anything that's urgent today, oh, okay. let's talk okay. about it. I, I want to, following Commissioner uh, Reese, uh, I'd like to make the motion that uh, the chairman contact the uh, Water and Housing Authority uh, to inquire the, the chairman to... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Harry. I was distracted. I'd like to make a motion that the chairman of this board contacts. Go ahead. When we were discussing the treasurer's report and the budget numbers and all that, Reese, Commissioner Reese said that if there was any inquiry about anything, it should be a board vote. Uh, and, uh, on the unacknowledged that Sue brought up about Gary the Pace not having his contract renewed in warrant. So I make a motion that the chairman uh, contact, because I'm curious why the contract wouldn't be. Contact who? Contact the Warren Housing Authority to inquire why the contract was not renewed with Gary to Pace. He's our fee accountant. If something is serious there or something happened, I think that we ought to... All right, there's a motion. I have a second. I, I, can, I can talk to you. You know what? I think I have, I've heard some things, but yeah. I can. So should I make the motion or should we just discuss it now? It's a, inappropriate to discuss it in, okay. in an open meeting with a So camera. should I... You asked me to make a motion, that's why. No, I didn't ask you, you to make a no, motion. No, you said if we wanted the information, we should make a motion. Or a board Any, vote. It, it, there has to be a quorum oh. board vote. Uh, individual board members cannot take off like a wild hair and do so. Okay. I appreciate that you would share that with me after the meeting. However, you could still vote. However, I'm still going to make the motion because he is our fee accountant. If something has happened, then other housing, I mean, he has a lot of housing authorities mm -hmm. under his wing, and he's been doing this a long time. So not to have a contract renewed, something must have. So I'm making a motion that somebody, and I would think it would be our chairman, uh, to inquire of the Warren Housing Authority why the contract is not being renewed with yeah, the fee account. Do I have a second? Hold on, hold on. No, you can second, then I'll just have it. Okay. Second? Sue, second? Second. Can I, now Thank you. can I have the can I ask for the um, the motion to be amended to say to reach out to Warren Housing Authority to confirm because it is a rumor it's, oh. it's, it's a okay. rumor yes. to confirm and then to inquire about why because it's that, just that's a fine I'm just curious sure. because he's our fee account as well Understood. And, and I have asked in the past for review of financial record and things and not bringing up anything else other than that I've asked in the past. So I'm just curious why, what went on down there. And, and if you're interested, we can make that call together if you prefer, it's up to you. Which up? All right, we have- uh, I do think that it should be followed up by a board member calling though. That's what, this is, well, that's what this is. I, all I said was to confirm. Right. The only change I made was to confirm. But no, I, I appreciate Gary that. is asking that David call. Yeah, because- yeah. There's no, nothing factual unless you exactly. hear it factually. 
Right. And I haven't heard of exactly who I'm supposed to call, so I guess I'll be calling <laughs> Warren Warren Housing Authority. So there is, um, I can give you the name of the executive director. It's, um, they're, they're actually the Barry Housing Authority. They're under a management, a short management agreement, a six month management agreement. Um, and then I can get you the name of the chairperson as well. I have that contact information. Not a three year management agreement, only six months? Oh, I, I, can, I can fill you in. <laughs> Okay. Um, thank you for the amended uh, to, to affirm. Yeah. Any other discussion about finding out why Mr. DePace may not be employed up in Barry anymore? anymore? If not, <coughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 No. 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 Three in favor, two against. The motion passes. All right. Um, we've got some other important stuff to do. I don't know if you guys want another meeting before. <coughs> The January, when's the next one? Well, December 19th, I believe. One, one final thing um, yes. on the uh, discussion. Yes. Where, where are we with the uh, ads for the executive director? Have we abandoned that? Has that gone by the wayside and I'm not aware of it? Or is it all? It's not on the agenda today. It was abandoned during the special meeting. It was abandoned during the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Could I have a few clarifications? Number one, Reese, what did you say you were going to give the copies of the common area? I'm yes. not. I am. I'm going to send that. So you're going to send that to by all email. of you. All of by, by email. email. Yeah. Yeah. And my understanding, Pamela, is that um, when that when you have policy, if you run them through your tenants organization, I didn't ever heard, heard of it. running it through tenants in general. So it was not before the board has been uh, privy to seeing them themselves because that's one of our duties as a commissioner is to deal with policy and I feel like it's been kept away from us so I'm trying to as a tenant I'm trying to get it into the tenants hand the board would approve it ultimately but you would get the feedback from the tenants to make sure that it's something you, we, that we listen to what their reasons are for having certain you know maybe somebody wants plot rose bushes throughout or um, they, they think that they should be able to have more than two chairs on the front. Whatever it is, we listen to the tenants and then it comes to the board and the board finally approves it. As far as a tenants association, tenants do not need to organize to have rights. Tenants have the right to say what is happening in their development. So I will have a tenants meeting so the tenants have the right even though we don't have a tenant association. Oh, I guess it better. And I would like to, Mr. Chairman, I would like to have another meeting to finish up what we didn't get to today and to, because of the fact that I prepared a, you know, a, a little talk on the PHN, oh, and right. I think it's very important. And December 19th is our next meeting, that's about? No, I mean before the next 19th, because, <laughs> because I feel that it's, you know, the, because of the fact that we've asked for the common Grounds of the, you want to do it today? I, well, not necessarily. It's just that the two things that I requested are being cut out of. I don't know what to do that. <laughs> So, uh, do you want to do it today or do you want to schedule a meeting? It's up to you. I'm, I'm around almost all the time. Mr. Chair? Yeah. I would like to move that we table the remainder of the agenda until our December 19th meeting because we are already two hours and ten minutes. And I think it's and really important to have tenant, um, tenant come. participation because oh, yeah. they bother to come. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to allow the public comment part of this agenda. If you were hoping to cancel that, I think. It's oh no, I don't. I don't. I just. I have to take a break. So. Okay. I'll okay. give them the room for a few minutes. Okay. Um, so are you saying you want another meeting before December 19th, or you want to discuss those things? Or either that, or move up the meeting closer and have it closer yes, to the, no, no, that's right. because of the fact that we didn't get, I just feel like every time I bring up something and finally get it on the agenda, it's pushed okay, away. Okay, I and I, it's very important, and it's very frustrating as a board member. So what are the things you wanted to discuss, sir? The P the P H M twenty twenty three. Right. Copy that. Again. Yeah. And if you don't want to do it now, we. I think waiting till the 19th is a long time to wait. Um, all right, go ahead. Let's do it. I mean, okay. Well, I, you want to wait for Reese to come back? It doesn't really matter. She can watch it on YouTube. It's up to you. Well, the PHN 2023-05 is a public housing notice. This public housing notice comes from the new Inspector General 
to give guidance to boards regarding the fiscal responsibility of a housing board. The board has an important fiduciary duty to safeguard the housing authority. Board members serve as a check and balance to protect against fraud and abuse of housing authorities. There are many examples of policies that I looked at that protect the budget, management, and housing authority. A board's diligence in adopting these recommendations will safeguard the housing authority. DHCD will assist small and medium housing authorities to access legal services through regional legal services programs and a budget exemption for hiring pre-qualified attorneys. Board of Commissioners have a legal obligation to call for an independent audit and to obtain an attorney to question the reserves to cover the costs. So when Pamela talked about having an audit coming up, once again, it's being done, the audit is being done by the Department of Housing and Community Development. And so basically, so. they're auditing their own selves. But this, this PHN 2023-05 is saying that the Board of Commissioners have a legal obligation to call for an independent audit to obtain an attorney and to question the reserves and cover the cost. So what I wanted to do today is to open up for discussion and take a vote once again for having an independent audit. Well, that's what not does a it say in, is, and in, in, Lisa Fallon is an independent auditor. She does not work for the Housing Authority, and she does not work for the Executive Office. No, but it's the same people that keep coming back over and over again to do the audits. And I yes. understood yes. that they, Harry, you chime in here. Didn't you understand the fact that the audits were done by DHCD they're accountants? They're done, they're done by IO when he gets there, but then they're audited the, the HLC gets audited by their own auditors, and the Housing Authority gets audited by auditors. So I was opening it up again for a vote to have. You can't. It's not on the agenda. You have but to have it on the agenda. It is, because it's the PHN, and but that's... No, if you have to have it specific, the agenda has to be clear enough that what you're talking about. So you're asking for an independent audit. You would have to have that... Okay, so let's open it up for at least the discussion part. At least now that I went over, we have to open it up for a discussion. I don't want you to make sure you got the quote right. Where does it say that board members have a legal obligation for the audit? It's on my it's my paperwork. On my copy that I've highlighted, right? I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, it's six, six, from. six bullet down is board right. members. Board members shall ensure that there are strong policies and controls surrounding the use of LHA, Local Housing Authority's cash handling and credit cards. Take out credit cards, we don't have credit cards. But the cash handling, the reports, the financial numbers, and why through, through months and months I've been asking always for independent audit, and I haven't brought it up, but you brought up this PHN. There is a responsibility of this board to ensure that we're in compliance that numbers are accurate, financials are being reported accurately, and, uh, and Gary DePace puts together treasury reports and his accounting, and then it's uh, independently reviewed by Lisa Fallon, who's affiliated with him some way, same place, same address. They know each other. She's done it for five years. He's been the fee accountant here for I don't know how long. So. I, I, I haven't changed my position on an independent objective audit by someone not involved with putting together the reports and looking at the numbers and auditing their own work. I have said that publicly month after month after month until a number of months ago I said I wouldn't bring it up again. Can, can and I'm not going to continue to bring it up because of this. Yeah, so what, what the, uh, the Attorney General came to the Mass Narrow Conference and spoke, um, and he is a very stern person. Um, there is a, a class coming up through the, the um, Inspector General's office for board members to learn, to talk about what was found in this, this PHN um, and, and the, the backstory to the PHN and how to avoid that. One of the most important things that you read, Sue, was that you have a fiduciary responsibility to ensure the finances, which means every month you go over the finances that you're given 48 hours in advance of the meeting, and you vote on it. You don't abstain from it. That's one of your duties, is to every single month review it. 
And this that's particular a one, the, the copy I have with the PHN actually says, as the last paragraph, quote, you know, the Board of Commissioners have a legal copy. It's, it, it's not exactly the same one, the one that you've handed out. The last paragraph is Board of Commissioners have a legal obligation I didn't to call for an independent it. audit <laughs> and to obtain an attorney to question the reserves to cover the costs. And that's, uh, I mean, they, oh, wouldn't so be, okay. they wouldn't be handing these out if they didn't uh, think that it was an important thing right, for but we do have to do an independent audit. We do have. We have two. We've never called it an independent audit. It's, uh, she's in, in, we do. It's, it, it, that's the guidelines. If you read the full guidelines, I can get you that for the next meeting, the PHN about the AUP audits. It'll tell you you have to hire an independent auditor. But these are the ones that are verified through yeah. through HLC. Is, it, is there a uh, exemption exemption or exception made for the expense of the independent audit or legal uh, expenses we have? Yes, so there is. Does no, the, uh, no, it's what you would do is you would put in you would do a budget mm -hmm. revision and you would have to pay for it with your budget reserves. Mm -hmm. Because there's not a, there is a line item for the independent auditor. So okay. for the so but that would cover the audit that we're required to have no matter what. If you choose to do another audit, that comes out of your reserves. But the independent audit that is Lisa Fallon or whoever the next person is that we choose, that is, there is a line item already. In our legal expense, um, do we have an exemption, any state support for legal expenses? We do. That's, we use the regional attorney that they're talking about. We use, and they give us funding. And then um, if you look at the um, what we just the revision where we ask for the budget exemption, we ask for more funding for that yeah, as well. So that's, but yeah. that's all through the, that is through the regional program, so mm -hmm. we use that as well. Mr. Will we get that funding? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Mr. Chairman, the actual um, paragraph says, DHCD will assist small and medium housing authorities to access legal services through regional legal service programs and a budget exemption for hiring pre-qualified attorneys. That's, That's what exactly we have right now. now. And yeah. we've had that for years in fact. But it's the same, what we're saying, it's the same people over and over again. It, it's not, you so, say ever so often you have to switch. Let me, let me ask it We do through the auditor, but not through the, the lawyer. The lawyer doesn't have any conflict of interest. And if they did, they wouldn't take the case. We'd have somebody else for that one case but the regional attorney that we use Hadley Housing Authority has been using this regional attorney for decades and there's nothing wrong with that regional attorney nothing no one's saying there's something wrong but it's just good to have another set of eyes looking at at the figures of a housing authority. and this is what I was talking about earlier in the meeting when you when I said that there's all these new people coming in that saying we're going to upset the apple cart it's not just a change it really is it's if I can tell you, it's not upsetting. It's important. Please, please. Tenant or board member. Pamela, if you weren't happy with our accountant, our fee account, or our auditor, or our attorney, and you wanted to change them, would you have to get the executive office's permission to change? Or as long as you stayed within the same budget amount? You can choose whoever you'd like. I don't need the executive office's decision, but what there is a contract with the regional attorney, um, and there is a contract with the um, with the auditor too. So if we decided to change the regional attorney, I would come to the board and say, "This is the list, and I'd like to use this one," and the board would approve that contract, and then I would sign the contract. Okay. So you would you but you would go through the list of the folks, and these folks were vetted for their knowledge of either employment law or uh, tenant law, um, and also that they have that, they, they use that same dollar amount. They've agreed to that same dollar amount. Yeah, okay, thank you. How do you get on that list? Do they have to apply? So they do, they do a request for proposal, and we, we actually had a meeting up in Holyoke two weeks ago. The executive office came out, there were over 20 of them. It was a very informative meeting with the executive directors and I brought um, John, our director of facilities, about a lot of stuff that's happening. And they were sa saying to us to really talk to um, contractors in our area because there is such a shortage of contractors to see will you apply to be on, on the, the approved list, uh, DCAM certification. If you, have, if you know a good lawyer, have a lawyer, uh, you know, uh, 
go through, there's a request for proposal to get on the to list. To get on the list so that they can vet them. And the same thing with accountants too. You know people, get them on, you know, get them on the list, have them contract HLC so that they can get approved because more options is always better. So are there other fee accountants besides Gary that's on this list that you can choose a different Absolutely. fee account? Absolutely. Yeah, and then the auditors, the independent auditors that DHCD approves for those yearly um, AUPs, they they cannot do their own housing authority. So like Gary's office actually uh, is an audit office. He's an approved state auditor too, but he's out in the eastern part of the state auditing those. And it is a it's a very small number. I, I believe in the entire Commonwealth we only have six fee accountants. It's very small because it's such For a 248 market. housing authority. Exactly. It's a very niche market. Wow. Very niche market. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to the public comment just to make sure there's nothing important. <coughs> Anybody from the public have anything they would like to address the commissioners with? <laughs> Judy. I do. I have had some paperwork here to submit to the office that needs to be uh, stamp dated and copied for me. I've been down here four different times on either a Monday or a Friday. The office is always closed. There's never anybody here. The posted hours are Monday and Friday. I come down here, can't get it done. Okay, let me so, stop you there, Judy. How about we having uh, irregular hours right now for some reason? So we do have a, the new property manager that is doing most of her training in Belchertown, and then myself, Carrie, and Pam Creek are covering the office when we can. The new um, property manager did come down with COVID as well, so that caused another issue. So, but we're working through it. And this one colleague has come down. I actually have an email from you about your interaction with Carrie. Mm -hmm. So she's been here. She's, we're, we're here. We're here. Okay, and they can always call the number and, he, and they should, she should call the office or send me an email and say, I have this paperwork I'd like to drop off. And I would, we would come over and make sure we're here for her. So and how would we, how would we know that? You can call the office or email how, and make an appointment. How would, how would the tenants know that they can do that? I think you're very well versed at picking up the phone or, or sending me an email. It's, it's not what I said. I, I'm not answering for every tenant. I'm answering to you. You ask me a question about you. I can talk to you about you. I'm not talking about other tenants. Well, I do. I do speak to tenants. But you and don't speak for some of the issues are not, that not tenants are having. We do not have that information. I don't have that information. What information? I can. I can I've answered the question. It's in okay. the newsletter. Yep, it is. Uh, to it's how to get a hold of the office. You know how to do that. And it's on the window, too. Oh, it's on the window. window. <laughs> Judy, I know how, when I've called the office, and you never, you don't get a live person. So no, I guess it just you, takes you some can't. Patience. You get transferred from here to yeah, there to here to there. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm not the only one that she can't was, speak. So, Excuse me. Right. I'm not the only one that has issues trying to get a hold of somebody in the office. There are tenants that don't know how to use the phone as well as I do. They don't know how to read the newsletter like I do. It, the, the office should be open. On days that's posted. It should be open when it says it's, when it's posted hours. There are not. So this is going in very, very late because you can't get in, you can't get anybody in there. And when you do, like there was when somebody here was so incredibly rude to me that don't shake your head, you weren't here. Yeah, you didn't speak. see or hear what happened. I don't think any tenant should be. I never come down to the office for that very reason. And when I did, that person was so incredibly rude to me. She slammed the curtain down in front of my face. I mean, okay, look, these are um, this is not, things. This is not elderly so, Judy, housing. Would you please write a letter to the um, executive director and see if you can't get some satisfaction? I did. I did. Okay. But I don't get any satisfaction there either. So. Well, you know, maybe there should be a training in customer service. Yeah, something. there should okay. be. <laughs> We've had it. There's, there's responsibilities on the tenant side, and it's also in the lease, the way that a tenant interacts 
with the housing authority contractors and commissioners. Oh, it's please. a two-way street. And, and this is right yeah. and step. Right. So what else you got to the other thing is um, <clears throat> maintenance, uh, work orders and maintenance. Contrary to what I heard here, um, I sent a work order in via email four times to have my storm windows put on my apartment. Four times. A date was set by Pamela Creek. No one showed up. Maintenance is Talk okay. about rudeness. All I can do is say, please take it to the executive director and see if you can't get some satisfaction if, if it goes on. Uh, but maintenance is supposed to be here on Thursday. They're not. They're right. never, they haven't been here for weeks. And when Pamela told me they were going to be here one day, no one showed up. Maintenance is being taken away on Thursday, which is the only day that we do have work orders. And we can't get them done. I don't understand you've had work orders in and nobody's come. Nobody came, nobody, re they don't respond when you, okay, when you well, put this on the agenda for the next week. Yeah, can I just point out that there's the work order list and that they, they did over 50 work orders in the month of September? We not here. Case, case, no. I mean, not yeah. here. <laughs> it, it is here. It's not a lie. It's from the software system. These are, that's how the, the commissioners are overseeing it is that you see the number of work orders that we're doing. And when there's a vacancy work order, it's one work order. So they could be in there for a full week, okay. which they are. They don't do it on so one day. So work orders on there? Her I believe so. I'm not sure. This is for September. I'm not sure what, I don't know what she's talking about because she didn't contact me like she's supposed to. This is day-to-day -day operations. Okay. I don't contact you for a work order or I contact, no, you contact whoever me. You does work orders. You should contact me with a complaint. You should contact the office with a complaint. So I got I a letter from the Pam. Got an email from Pam. It's not the same. It's not they gave me a date that they would be here. They never okay. showed up. I can up. talk to you about it after the meeting. I have yes, nothing to say to you. Should be, that's do, you, really do you see that? You know. yeah. Do you see that? Do you see this? <laughs> okay, um, we're, we're really done. Yeah. I think that's, that, okay. that was it. It's maintenance and work work. Non-existent and no hours in the office. Okay, well please document, work with the ED, and see if you can get some satisfaction, okay? Okay. I, don't, I sure hope nobody's targeting you and abusing you. No. and not keeping you safe in your apartment, okay? Um, no. All right, so... Well, he, went, he wanted to speak on... Uh, yeah, please. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to know how many times are they going to change a number to get a hold of somebody if I have a work order? Yeah. Because every month, yeah. <laughs> every month when the newsletter comes out, in the last three months, there's been a different number on the in the in the in the folder. Can I do you hold on one? You hang on one second. Uh, has the number been changing for me? It has not. It hasn't has changed in about well, three years when we had next <laughs> Where, where are you seeing the sure. number that you think has changed? Is, that, is this in the newsletter? I can right, it, it's in the newsletter that comes comes out every month. You know the housing newsletter, and then on one page they have a list of all the different people in their phone numbers, what their titles are, what their phone number is, and then you look over to the right and it says, you know, they have a number for the emergency work orders, and then right below it, they have a number for the regular work orders. And when I call that, I, and I call the extension, mm -hmm. I'm told that that person is not available at the time but leave your, uh, you know, your apartment number and your phone number, and they'll get back to you, and they never do. No. Because a while back, a while back, I had when somebody was in the office, I have, you know, went to put in a work order. So then, oh, I called, and they they said they were going to send the paperwork because um, th there was a new form that you have to fill out. For what reasonable accommodation? For reasonable accommodation, but that's right. not a work order. That's a reasonable. Right, but I mean, it's a re reasonable accommodation. So then, I had to wait three or four days before somebody delivered it 
to the office and I got it from from um, oh, what's her name? Uh, Mary Billion? Huh? Mary Billion? Mary, was it? Who's the? Anyway, she she gave it to me and I filled it out and I brought it back to the office the same day because they she came down. Oh, Mary. And uh, so then Mary says to me, well, okay, it's been approved because I had put in a request to have panels put on either side of my air conditioner because I have a medical letter on file, you know, here in the office that I need to have the air conditioner available to me, you know, whenever I need it, you know, all year round. So then when I was talking to one of the maintenance guys, and he says, he said that, yeah, this week, they'll, you know, they'll take care of it, but we'll see. And did it get taken care of? What's that? Is it done? No, because he said it, he said it'd be this, this <laughs> week, and then exactly. like you mentioned, Thursday, I guess, is the only day that normally that <laughs> I've seen, you know, the maintenance people around here. You know, I seen the white maintenance truck. So we'll see if that happens this week. This Thursday. On uh, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Maybe you need to remind them. I don't know how these things work. I don't want to get involved. If it's scheduled. But, uh, if it's scheduled. I will yeah. check in uh, the newsletter to make sure that it's those same numbers that have been up for years. There's one other thing while I'm here. It's while you're checking on that, I need to have a work order put in because my shower's not working right. Sure. But other than that, in the past, and I'll tell you, and I'll be honest with you, okay, when they put the new windows in, the maintenance people that were on, on, you know, in doing it, they come up to me and they had told me that my old air conditioner had black mold in it. And they got rid of it for me. I mean, they've been really great about that one. They went and if they were able to come down here to get it done. Mm -hmm. So then I got a new one. I had my, my health, health advocate uh, person get me a new air conditioner. And they came over, maintenance came over and put it in for me. Great. You know, I heard the same thing from Judy that the maintenance guys are good. They're accepted. Yeah, well, sure. They're I mean, they're great when they're here, here, but when are they here? Yeah, yeah. 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 they yeah. never do. And not here on Thursday. I would like to remind the commissioners that the entire month of August and part of September, when we were doing the window, maintenance and administrative staff were here every single day. That was just yeah. the yeah. Yeah. It, it was, but that takes them away from other other yeah. projects and other work orders. That we makes sense. You know, they got a big project, so, so other stuff fell through the cracks. Yeah, I'd kind of like to add to what. Um, okay, to be briefly. Said. Right? <laughs> Quickly, please. <laughs> What's your name, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> um, what What's happened is when you call, old employees are still on the answering service. Mm -hmm. Old employees, they're not even working here exactly. anymore. So okay. when you call, you have to click number 10, number 5, yeah. number 2, not Judy, number write 10. write and tell the administration, okay, we are not supposed to be involved with operations. The only time we're going to get involved with operations, if it really think, if it really looks to us like things are falling apart or the basics aren't getting well, done. Yeah. And if the government wants to take me to court, I will go to court happily defending the commissioner's <laughs> right to try to help their fellow community members. I live in Hadley. You're my neighbor. You're my community member. You vote, right? Yeah. So you and I, we both have a responsibility to look after each other is how I feel. If somebody tells me I can't look after my neighbors because you're now a housing commissioner, that doesn't work for me. Doesn't fly. So there are open channels for you to get this stuff done. Figure out the right, the right, is it Bill? Yep. Bill, figure out the right phone number to call. and. Some ask your neighbor if you're not sure what's the right. Yeah, one. like I said, every in the last three months, that the book, the little booklet comes out. Yeah, there's been three different extensions yeah. that you need to call. People can't well, keep calling until you get the right one, and then make a note somewhere of which the right well, one. Well, no, is. I mean, there's an extension on there. You know, there's a regular number for 
you know, non-emergency phone, you know, work orders. But then it goes through the whole thing, expeal, yeah. and he goes, well, if you know the number, or the extension number, the person, yeah. you need to get, and then that's what I say. And then when you get it, that person comes on the line okay. and says, well, there's Bill, no one here. Right, I'm gonna try to help you with this. I spoke to the chairman of the Amherst Housing Authority, who is our management agent, about having a live person answer the phone in Amherst. Yeah, and uh, what's that? <laughs> that can't happen, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Pamela yeah. says it can't happen, so maybe it'll never happen. No, he seemed to think it was the right idea. He was That's what it used to be like, where someone would actually answer the phone here when somebody called instead of going mm -hmm. through Amherst and then having yeah. to go through so many different. Okay. Um, so so sure. I can just point out again that, that, that there's only, we are understaffed, but we're fully staffed. We don't have staffing dollars to answer every phone call. Because we, not only do we get- Some phone calls. I no, mean, yeah, but not only do we get phone calls from tenants, we get phone calls from the 3,000, 10,000 applicants on the CHAMP system. Every single time you pull, you get you get thousands yeah. and thousands of phone calls. Anyway, there ought to be a solution, you think, cell Mr. phone something, if somebody needs a live person. Mr. Know? Chairman, since we didn't finish that PHN 2023-05, can we put it first on the agenda for the 19th because of the fact sure. that we didn't really finish it? And I just wanted to say one thing as a tenant before we leave. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking as a tenant, what do you know? I wouldn't do it. You, you're, wouldn't you, you should step away from the table, recuse yourself as a commissioner. She's going to never put, told me I had to step away. Before. You have to. You're, you're, you don't want to make an ethics violation. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed oh, to advocate for yourself. So re have her reading the meeting. Come on over, over here. here. Come on over here. Come over here. Be a tenant. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to bring up the fact that I had a wait, wait. We're being interrupted by as a tenant. I just here. wanted to have one second to say that I had a conversation with Pam the other day, and I I wasn't going to say anything more about it, but it's been bothering me about the number of no, no trespassing. Uh, that are going to tenants. We uh, lived here for years. I never heard pe tenants getting no trespassing orders. We so have multiple. The we, can do for you? Well, it's so that you're aware of the fact that people, because you're, because of the fact that so many. You're supposed to be addressing the chair, not the camera. Sue, um, you're talking to the camera, not the commissioners. I don't know why. Oh, I thought. I don't believe we have a policy that covers no trespassing orders. We've never yeah. had them handed out before. Multiple tenants have them now. Okay. Multiple tenants are being taken to court now, and because of the fact that it's such a large number at one time, all due to this one or two people that are living here, which I'm not mentioning names because you can't do that. But I want to make the, you know the board aware. I, that the number is an outrageous number of tenants. So maybe you'd like to suggest as a commissioner a policy that would help the commissioners work with the administration on overseeing appropriateness of <laughs> no trespass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to talk about that right no, now. That I'm just talking as a tenant. Can I make a yeah, comment to that? So it's, it's troubling to me that a, a tenant will try to step up for a tenant that's breaking the law in, in yeah. instead of us trying to protect the tenant that is being abused by that other tenant. So that's what the job is of the housing authority is to keep everything through the lease. Um, everybody has the right to quiet enjoyment. And I, as I explained to Commissioner Oppenheimer on the phone, the, le the no trespass orders were issued by the tenant and the tenant's family because they have a right to that um, and the housing authority as the owner has to issue the no trespass no north orders order as well and the office of elder services is involved too so we have a commissioner that's trying to protect people that are abusing other people these people have no. not been taken to court so you have them guilty before they've gone in no front it's of only a judge. not trespassing and, and the fact then, is that me, the other I do have the tents are not called in and one side is always heard here you don't know that you i don't know all that. i'm you saying is you know, you but you but you're, you're sitting saying. there saying i'm protecting people that have done wrong okay, you're guys. not we're so, not sure they've done wrong that's just speculation so, and that's what you choose to believe all right in this conversation i don't feel like it's a for the 
uh, commissioners, I hope nobody's taking sides uh, against mm -hmm. innocent people on anything in life. So, uh, yeah, here. Here. Mr. It's not, Chair, it's not here. Us to decide the other side is not going to I'm, I make a motion we adjourn. The other side is not going to adjourn for discussion. They're automatically. Okay, motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.